find my script. Okay. All right, good afternoon. And uh, welcome to this meeting of the Special Committee on Creative Industry and Performing Arts. Today is Thursday, October 21. And in behalf of the committee, uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Okay, so please allow me to invite you to a moment of prayer as we include in our thoughts everybody, especially our fellow Pinoys who have been affected by the pandemic in any way. Let's pray for those who are fighting for their lives in the hospitals, uh, those at home, those fearing for the lives and health of their loved ones, and those suffering emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, financially uh, from this pandemic. Let's also pray for the souls of those who have been taken away from us and that they may live in eternity at the side of our dearest Lord. Glorious and blessed Lord, we place our work and ourselves into your hands. Anoint our creativity, our ideas, our energy, so that even the smallest task may bring you honor. When we are challenged, guide us. When we are weary, energize us. May the work that we do and the way that we do it bring hope, life, and courage to all our stakeholders, both from the private and public sector. Bless our administration with wisdom and discernment, our stakeholders and government agencies with commitment and compassion our fellow countrymen and their families with courage and strength. Rooted in your love, may your face illuminate all activities done in your name. Amen. May the Amen. Father, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so thank you to those who joined us in prayer. The next item is the calling of the role. Do I hear a motion to dispense? Mr. Chair, I move that we dispense with the calling of the role. I second, Mr. Chair. There is a motion duly seconded to dispense, and hearing no objection, the motion is carried. Uh, the next item is the reading of minutes dated October 21, and its approval, which was sent in advance to the members. Can I hear a motion to dispense with a reading of the two minutes and to approve the same? Mr. Chair, I move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of October 21 and approve the same. So moved, Mr. Speaker. And uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, I second, Mr. Chair. I promote ako bigla. Uh, there's a motion, Julie, seconded <laughs> to dispense with the reading of the minutes and to approve the same. Hearing no objections, the motion is carried. Okay, so I'd like for us to acknowledge the resource persons uh, from both the public and private sector of the committee present. So, Comsec, take it away. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the meeting of the Special Committee on Creative Industry and Performing Arts from the Department of Labor and Employment, Ms. Jairi Persincula, Manuel Sanchez, Grace Baldoza, Mafel Sanchez, Casey Ramos, and Mark Valeros. From the Social Security System, we have Mr. Carlo Villacorta and Attorney Maria Victoria Garog. From the Department of Tourism, Ms. Gliza Sarmiento. From PhilHealth, Mr. Mel F. Mabagos from the Rights Act from Rights Action Philippines, Chairperson Ray Dulay, from Artist Welfare Project Incorporated, Ms. Jenny Bonto, from Metro Bank Arts and Design Exhibit or Metro Bank Foundation, Ms. Louis Lane Kalikdan, from Art in Art in Formal Art in Formal Gallery, Ms. Tina Fernandez. Uh, that's on her chair. All right. I'd also like to acknowledge, of course, Vice Chair Kiko Benitez and uh, Congresswoman Ria Fergara. And sir, uh, I uh, I I skipped uh, from the Tourism Promotions Board, Mr. Ian Santos and Ive Cruz. All right. So again, good afternoon to my esteemed colleagues, our partners in government, our resource persons, and those who are watching us live on Facebook. Today is our last session of our inquiry on House Resolution 2035 entitled A Resolution Urging the House Through the Special Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the State of Visual Arts and Other Related Industries. It's been a, an amazing opportunity for the committee to hear the plight and concerns of the visual arts sector at such a brief span of just three sessions. 
I'm a bit sentimental when I'm hearing for a specific sectors about to adjourn. But I know the fight must go on and I believe we have come to terms in addressing certain issues. We also believe that more collaborations from both the public and private sectors in developing this ecstatic and passionate industry will come into fruition. So we're claiming it. Before we move on, allow me to give a brief summary of what transpired in our last meeting, which lasted seven hours. We had a great and substantial discussion with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Foreign Affairs, the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, Cultural Center of the Philippines, and from the private sector represented by Ms. Boots Herrera of the Ateneo Art Gallery, Ms. Luis Lane Calicdan from Metro Bank Foundation, Inc., Arts and Design Unit, uh, Tina Fernandez of Art and Formal, and Attorney Rudolph Philip Hurado on the topics marketing issues and opportunities, intellectual property issues, regulations governing the visual arts sector, and institutional support for artists. Yusek Fita Aldaba from DTICIG stated that indeed the COVID pandemic has disrupted the activities and exposed the vulnerabilities of visual arts. But amidst challenges brought about by the pandemic, the industry has managed to stay afloat by shifting to digital technology. She went on to say that online platforms provided an avenue for visual arts to thrive despite the pandemic through online museums, galleries, and exhibitions. Moving forward, we appreciate the Undersecretary for propounding strategies for the expansion of the industry, which should include the conduct of more research and development in visual arts, stronger collaboration between and among government, academe, and industry stakeholders, utilization of technology for the production and distribution of visual arts output, raising domestic awareness of the sector, and investment in affordable art education. These will, no doubt, lift the visual arts sector, drive to a sustainable and competitive market. As to the state of the visual arts industry overseas, I completely agree with DFA Assistant Secretary Ed Menez that the Philippines should maximize the contribution of the diaspora to the development of the industry, considering that many Pinoys abroad are recognized visual artists. Indeed, the Philippine visual arts sector can better be marketed and appreciated by domestic and foreign audiences by ensuring that the next generation of Filipino artists are prepared to compete in the field by providing the mechanism by which the people interested to work in the industry can earn a living and of course investing in avenues that support job creation and innovation. On the issue of intellectual property we asked what government can do to ensure that visual artists' resale rights are protected. Fortunately, Attorney Jurado shed some light and that art galleries and auction houses should be compelled to automatically collect in behalf of the visual artists the percentage share of the stakeholders in the resale of their works. I still do hope that IPOFIL will study the suggestion made by Attorney Jurado as we are currently in the process of amending the IP code to strengthen IPOFIL's power, especially in enforcing the IP code online. I believe we were also able to enjoin Attorney Jurado to help draft uh, any such proposal to strengthen this IP regime for the visual arts sector. With regard to the regulations governing the visual arts community, we thank NCCA Cultural Heritage Section headed by Lawrence Charles Salazar for spearheading the discussion. We remember that he said visual arts may be regulated if it is a cultural property work of a national artist or work of a national hero or considered as a memorial and if it is part of a government collection or property. And the part of private art galleries and institutions, we acknowledge Ms. Tina Fernandez, Boots Herrera, and Luis Lane Calignan for underscoring the importance of supporting the art community through the provision of scholarships, travel grants, and exhibition and writing grants to artists, curators, and art critics. Having learned that the CCP Ateneo Art Gallery and Metro Bank Foundation have developed learning modules for visual arts, we appreciate their willingness to share their modules with the Department of Education. We would gladly endorse these to DepEd as soon as we had copies of the modules, which we are, I believe, working on at the moment. 
On a final note, this has been an overwhelming and tiring yet meaningful discussion, and we appreciate all government agencies and private individuals for taking the time off of their busy schedules to shed light on the state of the industry. After this hearing, we all know the fight is far from over. This is just the beginning of what is to come for the visual arts sector. We look forward to more collaborations between the public and private sector, and as part of our prerogatives, build and propose policies and government support to further strengthen this industry. And what a way to end the series of hearings by discussing our last topics for this afternoon. Uh, local government collaboration, visual artists welfare issues, and visual arts and its correlation with tourism. Now, just a few reminders for good order. Before we turn the floor over to other members and resource persons, please do observe basic online meeting etiquette, such as being mindful of the mute button. Kindly also address all comments and inquiries to the chair for proper order. Finally, please note that all messages in the chat function will not be recorded into the official minutes of the meeting. So if there are thoughts and insights that you would like to propound, please do so by calling the chair's attention before you are recognized to speak. So without further ado, let us start our last session of this inquiry. So we'll start with the first topic on local government collaboration. So we have with us the DILG and also in particular, the League of Cities of the Philippines as represented by Ms. Miki Monterde to be followed by uh, the private sector Rights Actions Philippines, Mr. Ray Dulay. So um, DILG, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the DILG is not yet in this uh, meeting. Uh, I'm trying to contact Bob. So what about LCP? I think LCP is here now, Bob. Uh, Miki, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. So for the LCP, let me um, just share our um, brief research on this matter, sir. So Mr. Chair, the LCP's core mission is always to bridge cities to cities, to national government and to private institutions in order to aid them in enhancing their capacities. We bank on our networks and partnerships that will generate further development to our members. Um, in fact, last July 2017, we undertake the Creative Cities Manifesto. As of today, Mr. Chair, we have um, 27 cities who manifested their support. And this number continues to um, increase as we um, gradually um, conduct more information and more um, dialogues with our members. So uh, for the visual arts local collaborators, initially, we have uh, researched on um, the following cities. We have Taguig on BGC murals. We have Manila on the repurposing of Intramuros Maestranza Wall. We have Iloilo on murals in public spaces to showcase the creativity of local artists. Also, we have the Gupan, the Anakbanwa Arts Residency Projects, which um, aims to provide an avenue for budding artists, not strictly for visual arts. Now, um, we also have um, gathered um, the ongoing Design Center and Design Counts projects. This is... Um, in, this is dedicated to analyze the cultural maps and to also analyze their, the economic contribution of the cities. Um, and the cities involved in these ongoing projects are Baguio, Cebu, Cagayan de Oro, Davao, Makati, Manila, QC, Taguig, and Pampanga. So Mr. Chair, um, let me just share that last 2018 to 2019, the LCP also conducted a survey um, and majority of the cities express that they are willing to undergo um, enhancement in their visual arts sector, cultural mapping, and related industries. However, the bottleneck remains on the lack of technical capacity locally and also in the delayed, res in the delayed response from the national government whenever they ask for assistance. So Mr. Chair, these are just our initial research and not conclusive yet. However, uh, Mr. Chair, the LCP will submit an in-depth report to the committee. And um, let me just also manifest, Mr. Chair, that should the committee undertake to um, have other dialogues or further coordination with cities, the League of Cities will always be willing to help and support the initiatives of this 
committee, lalo na po if ever you would um, undergo KIIs or FGDs, LCP is always willing to support the call of the commission. Salamat po. Thank you so much, uh, Mickey. And truly, LCP is a partner in developing the creative economy. Uh, we look forward to getting some ideas from the private sector, maybe in the open forum later after Ray Dulai presents on how maybe cities can work more closely with your sector to, um, to respond to the needs of the visual arts community. So now we'll move on to Rights Action Philippines, particularly Mr. Ray Dulai. You have the floor, sir. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present our side on the issue of the local arts council. Okay. Uh, I, I do have a presentation prepared here. Uh, I would like to, ano sana po, uh, to, to share the screen. Go ahead, Pastor Ray. Uh, okay. Uh, it's open po. Thank you. It's open po. Okay pa. Okay, wait lang po ah. Uh, nakikita na po ba? Hello? Hindi uh, uh, pa. Hindi pa. Oh, wait lang po. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is NCCA here, Comsec? Visible na po ba yung aking uh, ano? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, visible na. Sir, uh, wala pa, sir. Are they attending? Di ba sila yung in charge sa LCACs? Anyway, uh, you you may proceed, Sir Ray. Okay, uh, once again po, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I think some of the issues that we want to discuss in this presentation has already been tackled by the previous presenters on the issue of Local Arts Council. So... Uh, uh, so in the interest of time, Mr. Chair, we would like to just focus on some important points in our presentation. Okay, wait long po. I want to acknowledge also yeah. the presence of Congressman Coco Nograles. Hi, Cokes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, saglit lang po. Uh, excuse me for a while kasi hindi ko ma, ma, ano, ma, ma lipat yung aking slides. I don't really understand why. Pero uh, hihingi lang po ako ng, ano, ng assistance from somebody here. Wait lang po. Thank you. Is DILG here? Na baka they want to go first. Um, so yeah, while waiting, um, do we have questions from the members for the brief presentation of the League of Cities? Kong Kiko, Kong Ria, Kong Kogo. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, okay, na po. Ako. <laughs> okay. Uh, on the issue of, uh, it's not actually an issue, but on the creation of the local arts council. Uh, first, we would like to acknowledge the importance of uh, creating the local arts council and the, uh, the effort of our government to support the artists in uh, their important role in helping in the promotion of local arts and culture. And of course, in raising the level of public consciousness on our cultural values uh, in every community. And uh, we believe that the best and effective promoter of arts and culture will be the artists themselves. 
di po ba? So, however, uh, we can only do the significant task of promoting the arts and culture if we are, or the artists are organized and empowered. And of course, with the help of our government. We are grateful to know that the Local Arts Council also created to fund local artists and art-related events, including the art exhibitions. Helping the artists with their needs, uh, needed funds to launch art project activities will be a great help for us in perform performing our uh, significant role in the society. So, but however, uh, hindi po kasi namin maramdaman yung presensya ng local art council, even though na it was already uh, uh, mandated by the DLG na dapat bawat po munisipyo ay eh, meron talagang local arts council na mag a sa mga artist. So, based po sa aming mga ginawang group discussion with other artists, with regards to the existence of local arts council, we pinpointed some three important components that we would like to be part of the local art council. Po. So one is, uh, kasi hin, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, hindi namin alam kung saan naroon yung local art councils. So hindi po siya visible para sa amin. Then second po, well, yung, yung lacking of cultural organizers or coordinator. Uh, most of us naman alam natin ng artists hindi naman maso ma social life. No? Hindi po kadalasan hindi sila naglalabas, nasa studio lang o nasa bahay para gumawa. So hindi nila alam, hindi nila alam kung ano yung nangyayari, kung anong meron doon sa local arts council. And finally po, tatlong points nga lang po, ang isa pa po ay yung lack of art centers. I think uh, meron na pong nagtakel nito on the previous hearing. Uh, regarding the, the needs of having an art center. Kasi ang sabi ko nga before, bakit ang mga, ang mga youth, meron silang mga uh, basketball gym in every barangay, pero wala ang mga artist. Diba? We, 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 have to, ano, we have to tackle that issue, I think, kasi yan po yung pinaka-importante na magkaroon ng activities within, ano, within a community na kung saan mag magkakaroon ng interaction yung mga artists to promote the, the arts and culture ng bawat community. Okay po, yung pang pagkakaroon ng visible art, siguro ang tutok po muna ng presentation ko rito, uh, yung tatlo nga po. So, ang visible art council offices na accessible sa bawat artist and art organization. Uh, uh, we believe that this is one of the most important components that we wish to be included in having the local arts council. Establishing a, of a visible office, a secretariat, a working secretariat where we could visit to seek or, to seek or uh, request assistance. Katulad po ng mga proposals, ng mga, uh, what I mean, uh, documentation, uh, mga legal uh, documents that we need, like certification, etc. po no. Uh, sila rin po ang inaasahan namin na mag oversee ng art activities locally in every communities uh, like uh, promotion, education, organizing uh, and will manage the cultural organizer kasi nga po yung sa tatlong sina uh, nabanggit ko meron po dapat noon doon uh, magkaroon ng cultural organizer or coordinator na pupunta sa bawat artist. But I will be discussing that later. And uh, the other thing that we want uh, na maging part ng pagkakaroon ng uh, visible office ay ito po yung magiging connection namin ng mga artists sa mga government agencies like NCCA, DTI, Bureau of, uh, uh, I mean Department of Tourism, Bureau of Customs, Yung mga ganun po na, na sila po ang mag assist sa mga artists. So, less burden po sa amin. So, uh, ito nga po, uh, tangible assistance for the artists. Yung nararamdaman po namin na merong kaming connection sa government at merong ginagawa ang government para sa amin. 
establish ng link sa NCCA, katulad ng pagkuha ng mga certification, instead na pupunta yung artist sa NCCA, sa office nila, uh, lalo na uh, particularly yung mga nasa probinsya, dapat magkaroon ng uh, visible uh, office na sila na lang po ang pupuntahan ng mga artist para ma-provide yung mga needed or necessary documents. Uh, yan din po ang magiging venue para mag-submit kung saan kami magsasubmit ng aming mga project proposals for funding, for assistance. At yun din po, magmamanage ng cultural organizer and coordinators in gathering artist demographics para po sa pagkikreate ng database. Kasi ito po ang nakikita namin, namin importante kasi katulad nung nagkaroon ng pandemic, um, meron naman pong narinig kami na may tulong na ginawa ang NCCA pero hindi po lahat na abot. Probably dahil ang sabi nila wala sila sa listahan. So ang daming artists ang hindi nakatanggap ng, ng tulong. Uh, ang nakakalungkot kasi sila po yung isa sa apektado rin ng pandemic. Kaya marami rin sa kanila, marami rin po sa amin, nagkaroon ng psychological ano, impact itong nangyari. Tapos, uh, ayun po, sana kung magkaroon ng uh, visible art councils offices, sila rin po yung mag ano, oversee ng mga activities. At sila yung magtutulong sa promotion, education. Kasi we have to educate eh. Para po ma-empower natin yung mga artists, we have to educate them to sa special role nila sa social responsibility, yung promotion ng ating arts and cultural heritage. So parang kung mas magaganda nga po, kung hindi ma magiging matrabaho para sa kanila, ang gusto nga po namin, every community. Marami pong natatagong talento dyan sa mga sulok-sulok na hindi na nadidevelop because of lack of support from our government. Then, ah... Uh, ito po yung pinaka-importante na nakikita namin na dapat magkaroon talaga ng deployment of trained cultural organizer with knowledge on art and that will operate in every communities for the purpose of assistance, giving assistance to the artist, creation of database ng mga artists, organization, clubs, or individual sa bawat community po. Sila rin po ang magpo-provide ng education, orientation, training to the artists, and assistance on, on every artist whenever they have an activities, projects, that funding is needed. Sila rin po siguro yung gagawa ng ano, mag-create o tutulong sa paggawa ng mga project proposals. Kasi most of the artists naman po hindi marunong gumawa ng project proposals eh. Bukod sa hindi sila marunong gumawa ng project proposal, isa pa pong factor doon, hindi rin nila alam kung saan dadalhin yung project proposals nila. So marami pong naiisip ng mga projects, ang mga artist, lalong-lalo na po sa communities. One of my experience po kasi, nung medyo bata pa po ako, kami po yung mga cultural organizer, eh. mga ano lang po, volunteer. As an artist, ang gusto lang namin, ishare yung aming mga knowledge doon sa mga kabataan na mahilig uh, magpinta, mahilig gumawa ng kanilang artworks pero walang direction at hindi makapag-enroll sa mga sa mga eskwelahan. Bukod po kasi sa kulang talaga ng eskwelahan natin, o wala tayong eskwelahan para sa arts. Eh mahirap kung pumasok at minsan magastos, walang pantuition. So kami po yung nag-outreach, pumunta sa mga communities para tulungan ito. Mag Naglo-launch po kami ng mga pre-art workshops sa mga communities. Ang ginagawa po namin, kanya-kanyang bulsa kami. Yung mga lumang art materials namin, dadali namin, punta kami ng communities. Yung mga band paper, Oslo paper, mag-aambag-ambagan kami para makapag makapag-ipon uh, kami ng mga Oslo papers. At kapag naroon na kami sa isang area, Uh, i-distribute namin yan sa mga bata. Bibigay namin yung mga aming oil pastels, yung aming mga watercolor, just to, to ano, para turuan lang po sila, to educate lang po sila sa mga workshop. Sariling pagod, sariling pera, sariling pawis po namin, hindi namin alam na meron palang tulong na galing sa gobyerno. 
Kasi kung kung ang layunin po kasi po natin is to promote cultural heritage and arts, wala pong iba makapagpo-promote po niya ng effectively kundi mga artist. Di po ba? Kasi sila po ang mas nakakaunawa niyan. Pero kung hindi natin sila empower, sayang po lahat ito. Hindi po mapopromote ang arts ng isang councilor na bahagi ng local arts council. Hindi po mapopromote ng mayor yan. Ang magpopromote po talaga ng kulturang Pilipino at sining ay mga artist mismo. So, ang maganda po sana maging layunin ng organizer, cultural organizer, coordinator, tumulong siya ma-organize mga artist. For them to be empowered for them na maging magandang bahagi sila nung pagsusulong o pagpo-promote ng ating arts and culture. Okay, and next po, uh, ito po yung huli, huling punto na gusto naming maging bahagi ng local arts council. At sabi ko nga kanina, mukhang may mga tumatalakay na po dito. Meron na pong nagdi-discuss dito, yung pagkakaroon po ng mga art centers. Sabi ko nga po, kung bawat barangay nakapagpatayo tayo ng mga sports gym, mga basketball gym, but not but not art centers. Bakit hindi po 'yan? Hindi po naman lahat ng na kabataan mahilig mag-basketball. Di ba? Pero wala kami nakikita, hindi namin nararamdaman. Wala kaming venue kung saan pwede kami mag-interact, pwede kami mag-training, pwede kami magkaroon ng discussion to empower yung mga artists or to to develop yung mga bata, lalong-lalo na yung mga kabataan na mahilig sa sining. Hindi po ba? Uh, Mr. Chair, yun lang po ang gusto kong naming ipaabot na sana uh, magkaroon ng pagkakataon na maging bahagi ang mga ito ng ating uh, Local Arts Council. Salamat po. Maraming salamat sa pagbibigay ng pagkakataon sa Rights Action Philippines. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Ray, for all that valuable input. Um, is DILG now with us? Pomsek or wala pa? Sir, wala pa rin. Alright, so we'll now proceed to the open forum on the first topic. Um, so if the if any of the members present have any questions, you may go ahead. Kong Kiko, Kong Ria, Kong Coco. Mr. Chair? Yeah, go ahead, Kiks. Sorry, I guess I could could I ask uh, Mickey Lang if if uh, if DILG isn't here? Yeah. Is that is that okay? Is Mickey okay lang if I ask you the question I I had for DILG? Yes, po, yes, po, sir. Um, I'm just curious uh, in terms of the memorandum for local arts councils and establishments in LGUs and in cities. Um, these are not mandatory in my understanding. Uh, but they are somehow incentivized by the DILG. Tama, tama ba? Yes, po, sir. So would you suggest that this is something that legislation should do? Um, I think the committee just pushed for a mandatory cultural mapping uh, bill. Uh, should the establishment of an arts council, which is different from an arts coordinator uh, or an arts office, um, that I think um, Mr. Dulay was also talking about at the same time. Um, is this something that uh, the LCP would consider as, as uh, a welcome development or would this be too much um, imposition you know, on, on the LGU's autonomy? That's the first question. And then the second question is, are you aware of any uh, moves within um, the LCPs, for example, or among your members to create perhaps art districts or creative hubs within the highly urbanized cities of the Philippines? Uh, do, those two sets of questions, Mamiki. Yes, po, uh, Mr. Chair and um, Honorable Benitez. On the first question and whether to whether we are amenable to make it mandatory, um, I would have to qualify it, no, sir, because um, currently, Although the DILG circular is not mandatory, that is being implemented in certain cities, but they are embedded in the tourism office or in the um, under office of the mayor, mainly because um, the 
LGUs have personal um, limitations. So, funding. Um, yes po, um, we have cities have issues on funding. So, um, instead of totally um, neglecting the DILG circular, cities opted to embed it as an additional task to the, to the already existing office, such as the tourism office and the office of the mayor. So whether to make it mandatory that I have to um, ask the consensus of the member, sir. However, I believe that um, in getting their approval on making it mandatory, the funding will be an issue in this matter, um, your honorable. So on the second issue, sir, on whether we have um, in info on having art districts in highly urbanized. I think that is being implemented um, already, sir, but still, sir, depending on the funding. Second, sir, depending on the priorities of the respective um, local chief executives because uh, making or undertaking in art districts, um, sir, would, uh, would require planning, funding, and personnel. Those three are always sir, um, subject to the existing condition of the cities, whether they have fund, they have additional personnel to undertake the work, and whether um, they have the capacity to really implement a plan such as the art districts. So, yun lamang po, um, Mr. Chair and Honorable Benitez. Salamat po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I saw that uh, Ray turned on his camera. Did you want to add to what was said? You're muted, Ray. I I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I accidentally <laughs> I accidentally uh, opened my camera. I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> but it's okay. So my questions are for you, sir. So it's okay. Ah, okay. It's All right. Uh, thank you, Kong Kiko. So, um, mm, okay. So you are an advocacy group, Rights Action Philippines. And I would imagine that you have some kind of uh, data that you've collected over the years uh, based on your advocacies, for example, activating the local culture and arts councils. So to your knowledge, sir, uh, how many LGUs have actually activated the LCACs? Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Chair, bago lang po kasi kami, yung grupo namin. Ah, bago lang. So yeah, bago lang po kami, actually, uh, 2019 nga lang po ito nabuo. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, medyo nag-idle po kami. Tapos uh, this year lang po, uh, doon po ulit na-activate. But we would like to thank you kasi nga uh, nabigyan kami ng opportunity. Kasi kami naman, although matagal na kaming mga artists, may mga previous organizations din kami ng art group. Uh, but the thing is, hindi po kami kasi aware na kailangan palang i-gather yung mga data na ganyan. Okay. All right. Mm. So... Uh, Sigura, this is really more for DILG, no? So I'm gonna ask away the questions, and if it's DILG who can best answer them, let's take note, Comsec, and ask them to respond through a position paper um, to be submitted to us uh, by next week. Kong Kiko and I are curious to know how many LGUs have actually convened the LCACs. So maybe among the League of Cities constituents and then League of Municipalities constituents, uh, but maybe DILG has that data available on, on their end. Um, the second question would be, and maybe Rights Action Philippines or some of the other private sector stakeholders who are with us here, anybody feel free to raise your hand and chime in. Um, to your knowledge, who are the model cities or municipalities that have convened their LCACs? Based on sa mga dealings nyo with the LGU, meron ba kayong na-encounter na, na? Yes, go ahead, Ray. Uh, yes, uh, uh, meron po kasi kaming uh, naging member ng, ng Rights Action Philippines na from Pampanga. Okay. Uh, siya po yung leader ng art group doon, Hermine Hildo uh, Pineda. Okay. Uh, meron po silang uh, constant na pakikipag-ugnayan sa kanilang local uh, government. At uh, binanggit niya nga po sa akin, sa amin po, na sila po, meron po active po yung kanilang art group with the help of their local government. Anong local government po yun sa Pampanga? I think Pampanga po, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't remember. 
Uh, but I'll, I'll be, I'll be, ano, sige po, tatanungin ko po, pero... Is it a city or municipality? Ano, uh, it's actually, I think, I think it's a city po. Oh, sige, patanong na lang po, oh, and sige. send it to us. Okay po, sige po. How sige about po, chairman, chairman. the other private sector uh, stakeholders here? Like, I, I know that Alpi is also here, Jenny. Based on your experiences, uh, sino mga city or municipality yung nakapag-organize ng LCAC nila at saka very active? Um, top of mind, sir, Baguio. Oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Baguio, uh, Marikina. Kasi meron local arts council, tapos merong heritage council din eh. So, hmm. may dalawa yun. Um, sa Visayas Mindanao hindi, hindi ko maisip now but usually the local councils they really parang they want to organize tama si sir uh, they want to organize they want to envision it but yung how to and who yun yung tricky na sino isasali paano misan along the way of organizing it ng kakagulo nag-aaway so um, it's it's kind of hard malabon malabon has yeah malabon uh, tapos yun lang po but i'll 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 check also okay so yeah so let's all work together on uh, finding out the model lcax Uh, uh, Baki Ray, uh, RR is raising his hand. You're muted, RR. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair. I just want to share the process that we went through, uh, maybe just to sure. also uh, give an idea to our uh, other LGUs. Uh, the, the, what we, we don't have uh, a culture and arts, uh, arts council in Baguio City. What we do have is the Creative Baguio City Council. No? Um, this was an initiative of the, of the artists and craftspeople themselves uh, uh, in accordance with our commitment to UNESCO to form a governance council to pursue the agenda of the Creative City. Um, but before this, there was an initiative by one uh, a counselor uh, to To, to establish uh, to to establish a an arts and uh, culture and arts council through a city ordinance but this has been overtaken by the creative city uh, initiative but the spirit and the substance of the CBCC is quite uh, similar to the idea of a culture culture and arts council uh, Mr. Chair um, we followed the membership uh, to the council follows the UNCTAD categories no Uh, and what the way we did it was through a consultative and participatory process. Um, we convened a general assembly of uh, artists, creatives no, uh, uh, in the city. Uh, it was a big uh, gathering at the Baguio Convention Center. And we made sure that uh, there were representatives from all, all the cultural forms, no, visual arts, um, crafts, no, um, heritage, no, et cetera. And, Uh, we we uh, had workshops to ask them to choose their representatives in the council. Okay. So they uh, we were uh, they came up we came up with a short list of representatives and uh, Mayor Magalong um, in consultation with uh, with uh, with us, no, uh, the the core group of the Creative City Initiative. Uh, advise him uh, on how to choose uh, the, the representatives to the council. So we have right now we have 30 regular members to the council representing various uh, cultural forms and creative uh, disciplines. Um, and but aside from that, uh, we also have an ex an expanded uh, council which includes everybody that was shortlisted through the participatory process. So uh, that's how we did it. So we have. Uh, focal persons for visual arts, for crafts, for heritage, uh, uh, folk arts, uh, and tourism, uh, among others, uh, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, quick follow-up, RR. Yung Creative Council ng Baguio, is it 
uh, is the composition ad hoc? Meaning, uh, sorry, ad hoc in a sense and not when it's needed because it's needed 24-7 because it is a priority of the city and it's also been institutionalized, diba? Right? Through yes, an but... ordinance. Uh, meaning, uh, what I mean by that is... Uh, is the composition based on the participatory process of determining who will be part of the council or is the membership prescribed in the same way that the LCAC is prescribed? And I've actually uploaded a screenshot in the chat of the composition of the LCAC. People can open it. It says it's chaired by the mayor and uh-huh. prescribed kung sino sino yung dapat members uh, based dun sa uh, mga representatives ng different sectors. Opo. So, yes, that's yes, this ba yung ano? Yung yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah. yeah, the city ordinance uh, creating the CBCC uh, mm-hmm. explicitly defines the membership no, of the of the council. Okay, uh, all right. So we have 40% representations from government agencies and uh, go- LGU and uh, national government agencies and uh, of 60% no, from the private sector. Uh, mostly coming from the culture and arts uh, group. Mm-hmm. Oops. What is the source of funding of your creative council? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, the local government unit. It appropriated uh, 10 million a year uh, for, for the operations of the council. Oh, but is there, specific, is there a specific uh, fund in the era from which it's sourced? Like, do you use the gender development or do you use the, the youth fund, na 10%? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, they really have a culture and arts fund. Uh, okay. Uh, they, they appropriate, they created that uh, by virtue of the city ordinance. Uh, okay. All right. So it's it's specific to Baguio. Apo. Yes. Right. Um, Miki, if we were to um, identify a source of funding for the LCACs, what would be the best if like, we're going to propose legislation for it? Of course, this is uh, uh, without taking cognizance of the fact that uh, LGU should have their own fiscal autonomy and they shouldn't be told how to spend. But ideally speaking, like if kunare, we're going to propose to the League of Cities uh, PCCN meetings, natin, like we're going to encourage them to organize their LCACs. Ideally, where should the budget fr- uh, for that come from? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think gusto namin supportahan or i-model yung Baguio City a specific funding for the culture. Um, kasi, Mr. Chair, kapag kukunin mo siya on other sources, uh, appropriated na po kasi siya, Mr. Chair, pag sinabi natin youth, gender. Although, if I can just, uh, parang by analogy lang, Mr. Chair, with the education, although short, um, some of the projects for the education kinukuha din po ng cities on other sources like na sabi niya po um gender and youth yun nga lang um i cannot speak conclusive po sa buong cities mr chair because iba-iba yung um total of parang collections nila so the ideal i think the most conservative for us mr chair is that kung magkakaroon talaga ng separate funding for the um culture so as not to uh, affect other existing programs na din po of the exis- of other cities. Uh, Miki, yung uh, organization of the LCAC now, it was mentioned earlier that it's it's an incentive for cities no, if they are able to organize. Tama ba? Yes po. So what is the incentive for cities for organizing their LCACs? Points sure. to SGLG? I think SGLG, Mr. Chair, and... Uh, kasi, Mr. Mr. Chair, yung SGLG, hindi siya basta na-comply mo yung isang sector, pasok ka na dun sa SEAL. Um, yeah. May evaluation pa po. So, kung good ako with culture, not good on other sector, hindi ko pa rin makukuha yung SGLG. So, yung incentives... Accumulation of points, eh, no? Yes po. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Accumulation of points... And yung continuity, yung sustainability nung na ex, yung nagawa na po in previous years, yun po yung total na nasasama po dun sa evaluation para makakuha ng SGLG yung isang city. How many points are are um, 
associated with the LCACs. That I have to check, Mr. Chair, kung ilan po ang points. Yeah. Um, Comsec, let's find out siguro from DILG, no? Um, baka one way of really strengthening the position of arts and culture in the city or municipality is by assigning bigger points for it in the SGLG. Uh, kunwari, kung two points lang siya at the moment and they need 30 points to get it, baka they'll focus their efforts on the bigger ticket items. Like, uh, kunwari, mm, kunwari, infrastructure or or uh, a garbage dump, uh, MRF or whatever is like five points, eight points. Eh di, syempre, you focus on those big ticket items, di ba? Para maccumulate my number of points. Uh, but but if we can assign bigger points for the LCACs, given its role in the creative industries and arts and culture sector, baka mas pa-prioritize nga siya na mga LG. Anyway, let's find out, Comsec, um, the process of the SGLG, the points uh, uh, associated with LCACs uh, for this purpose. Um, so currently... Uh, dun sa memorandum circular, nakalagay ba na role ng LCAC is mag-collect ng info or mag-maintain ng database? Maybe that's for Mickey. Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if kailangan po ng database. However, specifically for the cities, Meron silang, kan, kasi sir, Mr. Chair, di ba po nasa tourism sila? Yun yung database nila sir, not solely for culture and arts. But for the for the umbrella of tourism or for the office of the mayor, yun po yung data na nakokolek nung office na yun. But solely for the LCAC, Mr. Chair, wala po akong um, definitive data as of now. Parang wala ata... I'm looking at the functions now based on the MC. Pero RR dun sa Creative Council ng Baguio kasama sa functions nila yung database. Opo. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. It's uh, specified as one of the functions. All right. Kasi we're proposing that in our creative industry bill. Pero syempre, hindi pa siya batas. Uh -huh. um, so, tama yung recommendation kanina ni Sir Ray na dapat may mag-maintain ng database of creatives. Yeah, Dito right. kasi sa LCAC, nakalagay lang establish a local registry of cultural property for the pre-cop ng NCCA. Mm. Uh, so, yun nga, may gap. May gap dun sa mga mandated functions. Not to mention, may gap rin sa implementation ng circular. Hindi lahat nag-organize ng LCAC. Okay, sige. Um, I want to ask this uh, to Sir Ray. Uh, you mentioned your second recommendation is magkaroon ng cultural organizers and coordinators. So, uh, in your opinion, Sir, ano yung mga capacities na dapat meron ng isang cultural organizer or coordinator? Hmm. Well, unang-una po, based sa mga discussion namin, dapat po trained ng NCCA okay. para alam po kung nang malalim, nang malalim, kung ano talaga yung sining. Ano yung dapat i-promote at anong i-organize at sino ang i-organize. Okay. Ganun po. Tapos, uh, dapat po nasa mismong nanggaling do sa community kung saan siya nakatira. Para mas kilala niya kung sino yung mga artists within the community. Tapos alam niya rin po ang kultura. Kasi po, pag doon po nakatira yan, kung, kung taga doon, taga mismong sa lugar na yun siya isinilang, mas malalim yung paggagap o pag-alam niya doon sa kultura, sa local culture nila. Okay. So para yun, yun po ang nakikita namin. Alright, thank you sir. Um, since NCCA no, well, is present naman, no, Comsec? Comsec. Sir, parang wala pa. Really? Oh, Mr. Chair, uh, may board meeting daw sila as we speak. So, yeah, nag-apologize daw po. Wala daw pong representative for this meeting. Uh, siguro, um, itanong na lang natin kung may program ba ngayon ng NCCA for training uh, cultural coordinators slash 
organizers. Cultural no? mapping, Mr. Chair. Ah, yes. Definitely cultural mapping meron sila. Pero parang iba rin yung hinihingi ni ano eh. Yung pinopropose ni Sir Ray. Kasi mapping is more of ano eh. Parang in compliance with the, the heritage code. And uh, it's really more of establishing a local registry of cultural property. And declaring and maintaining local heritage zones. Pero wala... wala dun sa Cultural Heritage Act yung pag-maintain ng database of creatives and also providing uh, those capacity building programs. Well, in compliance with GAMABA, the GAMABA law, it says, acknowledge the importance of traditional folk artists as singular conduit between skills of past and future. revitalize the community's artistic tradition, provide mechanisms for identification, and assistance for qualified traditional folk artists to transfer their skills to the communities and create opportunities for popularizing their works locally. But this is very, this is very niche. So there are a lot of creatives who will not be included in the scope of, their, of the LCAC's functions in compliance with the GAMABA law. So meaning to say, may gap talaga. Uh-oh. So, so, Sir Ray. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. So, uh, siguro yun yung kailangan natin malaman uh, from NCCA. No? So, tanungin na lang natin. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, uh, sumagot na po yung, ano, yung isang artist. Uh, Porak Pampanga po. Uh, Porak. Mm. Maganda po ang pakikipag-ugnayan ng LGU o, at ng mga art, local artists doon. Is that a city? Ta- or? Uh, I'm not so sure if that ah, well, is a city. Para municipalities lang po. Municipality po, Mr. Chair. Municipality, okay. All right. Okay. Um, we also took note of the project proposal capacity. Um, and so, I think, uh, baka pwede natin yun ihabol dun sa Creative Industry Bill, uh, Comsec, Luis, as one of the capacities uh, to be added aside from bis- making business plans and uh, financial literacy. Kasi, uh, honestly, ako, I was able to get a hold of the template uh, for the uh, proposals for the NEFCA ng NCCA. And then pinamudmud ko sa local creative communities namin dito. And then in the end, walang nag-apply. Mm. So that was ironic given na pagkasama ko sila, it's a laundry list of like, sana ginito, sana ganyan. And then ito may pagkakataon para makapag-apply for a grant. And then wala naman nag-apply for a grant. So siguro lack of capacity or baka mm. overwhelming yung mga hinihinging mga data. Mm-hmm. Oh, or baka na busy I don't know samot sa uh, rason uh, uh, Mr. Chair ang experience po namin hindi po talaga nila alam kung paano ipipil up yung mga yung mga ganyang yung mga... data kaya po uh, instead na ma- ma-encourage sila to submit proposal nadi-discourage po at sa kasama na rin po marami rin pong hinihingi maraming mga mga requirements okay All right. So that's really more for uh, the it's that's a really a comment for the NCCA not to make some adjustments. Um, okay. Uh, na banggit kanina ni Mickey na tagig Iloilo Marikina uh, Manila uh, not Marikina sorry Manila through the Maestranza. And kami sa Dagupan, we recently launched our Anak Banwa Arts Residency Program. Uh, these are some of the cities with uh, growing art centers. No? Um, and of course, sa Bacolod, let's not forget yung um, Orange Project. Pero based on your um, familiarity, Sir Ray or Jenny or any of the other uh, stakeholders present, Uh, ano pa ba yung mga model cities 
dito sa Pilipinas or model municipality sa Pilipinas na merong successful art center na baka pwede nating i-scale, i-replicate sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas. Based based dun sa mga sharings ng members ninyo. Well, I I heard po sa Pasig po nagkaroon sa Pasig area, uh, may nag, nagkaroon po ng mga ugpay kapag ugnayan dyan, pero hindi po na-sustain. Okay. Later on, na-dissolve na, na, na din po. Kasi nga po siguro, kaya nga po ang inaano namin, dapat talaga po may malinaw na itatalaga po tayong coordinator at organizer na siya pong talagang tututok. Kasi kung aasahan po natin yung mga artists, most of them, uh, ano eh, hindi po sila socialize na ano eh, napupunta sa labas o mag-organize. So, siguro may mangilan-ngilan, pero most of the time, ang nag- nangyayari, uh, nadidiscourage sila, nawawala. Ganun po, na- na- nadidissolve. Mm-hmm. How about you, Jenny? Uh, Mr. Chair, yung merong mga museums na yung sa Iloilo ay... Mm, yes. I know the, that they are um, nag, nag-invest talaga sila doon tapos ginawa nilang local and uh, national and international yung mga laman noon na pinupuntahan na ng mga schools nearby from Mindanao. They go there parang field trip so uh-huh. ng Visayas. So I, I know the curator who uh, worked on that. that that's one idea um merong mga artist sa AOP na yung small small lang talaga na barkadahan na nasa loob ng barangay na ang kanilang ni-reach out lang ay yung mga grade school high school na mga visual artist budding na every saturday they will uh gather them to teach them but uh, it's really uh, out of pocket nga yung sabi ni Sir Ray. Yeah. Yes. Tapos isa pa po Mr. Chair, uh, siguro nakaka-contribute din po dyan yung kawalan talaga po natin ng art centers. Kasi kung may art centers po, mabubuhay po lahat yan eh. Kasi meron silang venue to to ano launch their activities, venue for them to interact venue for them to conduct trainings, workshops sa mga bata. So by by that way po, talagang napaka-powerful ng pagkakaroon ng art centers to promote art and culture doon sa local uh, communities because nai-encourage yung mga tao pag nakikita nila na meron palang ganito. Just like uh, doon din po sa mga basketball gym, nai-encourage maglaro yung mga ano, yung mga kabataan because nakikita nila visible, tangible yung look venue where they could express their ano, creativity. Uh-uh. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I've been monitoring for the past five years the municipality of Dulag Leyte uh, of Attorney Mildred Ke. And uh, yung funds nila, for, for example, for Fiesta, yung existing mga funds for that, talagang ni China Channel nila to uh, dig into their own local culture. So the mayor really had to si para lang ma-fund yung mga cultural events or or may existing pero ni work niya in such a way na mas uh, mag-express ng sarili na lang kultura for example nagtatanong siya bakit nandito kami sa Dulag Leyte pero papag uh, piyesta sinulog ang laging laging sinasayaw <laughs> but ganon eh, meron naman kaming sariling uh, bamboo festival. So kahit sa ganong mga efforts kasi merong meron kasing pwedeng may funds eh pero hindi lang talaga siya naka nakaangkla dun sa uh, uh, aim ng trying to help out existing local artists. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um so the question really was are there model cities with art centers? And I think we've identified already based on the uh, sharing kanina of Mickey, uh, what are those cities that have these art hubs? Um, pero 
uh, you know, in generating this data, which is very much lacking, and data is essentially needed uh, for legislative proposals from Congress. Perhaps that's where also um, the advocacy groups like Rights Action and Artists Welfare can also be of uh, value diba, to the process. Baka from among your members, you can help us gather this data. I mean, just based on their personal sharing. Um, san san ba yung may active LCACs? Or kung hindi siya LCACs, san yung may parang enabling environment in which they feel valued and appreciated. Anong city or anong municipality ito? Para we can reach out to them and then we can do a key informant interview, di ba? Para, you know, we can uh, assess and maybe replicate and scale the model. Um, and of course, kami, we're going to propose to institutionalize it through law. But of course, that needs to be supported by data. Kasi... Obviously, the prioritization right now is skewing towards health. So, paano natin ijo justify yung expenses? So, uh, but if it's supported by data, na I think it will be very, very, um, uh, very, very uh, effective. Um, and I, I'm, I'm certain you'll be able to help us out on that. So the question was, model cities uh, with art centers that can be emulated. Um, mm-hmm. Throughout the country, so um, I think that's pretty much it on my end for questions on this topic. Unless there are other questions, uh, Mr. Member. Chair, go ahead, Ray. Uh, uh, gusto ko lang pong yano ano, I- erase ito. Uh, kung may local arts council, di ba dapat nagpipresent o nagre-report po sila kung ano yung mga activities dun sa lugar nila, their respective areas. Yes. Hindi po ba tama na mas tama po na dapat po Ah, sila ang may data niyan na ipipresent kung totoong meron ngang meron ng activities at kung totoong meron bang na-establish na communication or coordination with the artist group in their respective communities. I think sila po ang dapat nasa position na. <laughs> I'm sorry pa pero sila po dapat ang nasa position to provide those data, hindi po ba? Yes, oo. Uh, the problem mm. nga is hindi lahat nag-organize ng LCAC. Ayun, ayun po. Sige. Oo. So, that's also lang naman where the advocacy group comes uh-huh. in handy. Yeah. Because the private <laughs> so, sector mas organized pa sa government. Yeah. Alam niyo so, naman. Nga, <laughs> yun nga po yung nakita namin, ang laki ng gap. That's Malaki why, gap. kahit po gaano katagal tayong sumulong sa ganito, we cannot be able to promote our culture and arts kung merong mga gap na ganyan. Kasi yes. kung wala pong participation ng artist, hindi po magiging successful yung promotion natin ng ating local culture and arts. Hmm. All right. Sige. So, I'm, I mean, hindi naman siya imposition. It's more of like, <laughs> kung meron lang kayong uh, pwedeng iambag dyan, please send it our way. Uh, kasi yun nga, kulang na kulang yung data sets natin. Yes uh, po. Are you raising your hand? Yeah. Uh, gusto ko lang din supportahan yung sinasabi ni, ni Congressman Toff, no? Uh, para kay Sir Ray, uh, na... Uh, sa experience ng Baguio, halimbawa, ang nag-push talaga ng, ng uh, ganong uh, structure na official ay artist groups. Uh, mm. It's something that they lobbied for um, and convinced the LGU that this is something that we should have uh, in place, uh, especially that, uh, since we were declared a UNESCO graded city. So mahalaga yung uh, lobbying ng uh, organizations mismo ng artists. Dapat magkaisa rin sila para mas malakas yung voice nila uh, sa pag-push ng ganito sa agenda, sa local, even sa national level. Yes, yes po. Totoo po. In-acknowledge po namin yan. Kaya nga po, that's why we are requesting to have a, a cultural organizer and coordinator to empower the artist. Kasi kung sila lang po ang aasahan Yeah, and, and it can come from us. It can come from yeah. the artists themselves. Kasi yeah. counter, counterintuitive yung sinasabi natin, empowered tayo, pero aasa tayo sa LGU. Di ba? Yeah, ang kailangan lang po, ang siguro po ang, ang nire-request lang po namin is somebody to coordinate from the government ah, okay. to reach out to the artist. But ang mga artists naman po, pag may nag-coordinate yan, we are willing to be part of uh, the process naman po. Yeah, so ang ang ginawa rin namin is we, we identified champions within the the mm. city government, no? Uh, the artist groups 
identified their champions in the city council. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked to the mayors, the former mayor and the current mayor, and sat down with them and really uh, uh, educated them about the need for culture and arts. Because usually okay. culture and arts is not in the center of the agenda. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you so much po for that. Uh, noted po namin yan. Na sana uh, kung talagang may mga, mga pagkilos po na ganyan, uh, sana na-establish na natin matagal na yung bawat grupo ng mga artists na naging active na for that. Kung meron talaga pong ganyan. And we're hoping po for that. It's a good, it's a good point po na kami naman po eh open lang kami rito yung mga artists. Nag-antay lang kami. Uh, yung, marami nga po sa amin actually nag-initiative ano, nag na na kami na lumalapit, kami na naggumagawa nag ng sarili naming mga activities to help uh, us in ano, promoting our local culture. Sariling pera, sariling pera po namin. Nag-aano nag, kami, nag-organize, pero hindi po kasi, ano eh, hindi namin masustain kasi syempre may mga pangangailangan din kami. Kaya nga that's why we are, we are ano, uh, reaching out sa ating government to help us in Uh, ano in uh, empowering us at uh, siyempre it, kung kung may funding man makukuha malaking bagay po sa mga artists at sa mga organization to launch their activities to launch their creativity to show their creativity to promote our cultural heritage yun lang po Mr. Chair yeah okay so definitely um, we need data coming from the government agencies Uh, we requested for uh, data on which cities and municipalities have organized their LCACs successfully. Uh, I will make a guess na hindi marami ang nakagawa na niyan uh, or else we wouldn't be here today. Um, and hindi siya required. Uh, yun yung problema. At so meaning to say, hindi kinocomply kasi it's based on prioritization. I mean, we're very fortunate that Baguio uh, has put that as a priority in their agenda but not all cities and municipalities prioritize arts and culture so kung may LCACs man we need to know who they are and where they are um, and so uh, definitely we'll rely on the uh, the government sector to be able to provide that data um, but then uh, simultaneously if there is data that can be collected by the private sector on things like san san ba yung may magandang art center kasi kahit kami uh, na creative industry committee na and every day this is all we talk about uh, there's a lot of uh, information and data that hindi namin alam because hindi naman kami pupunta sa bawat munisipyo bawat syudad ng Pilipinas we don't have that capacity and neither does NCCA honestly because they're a national agency they don't have regional offices Um, and so it's very, very challenging. So whatever sharing or of data that you might have on your end, um, based on sa na, naikwento ng isang mem miembro nyo, mm -hmm. na parang, uy, alam mo sa amin sa City A or Municipality B, ganito, yun yung mga gusto naming malaman para po alin namin silang <laughs> puntahan at ma-interview. Oh, so ba bakit nyo na decision na, na ma-prioritize yung arts and culture dito sa lugar ninyo? So, di ba, parang it's, it's those things na, ano, eh, parang it's the kind of uh, data that maybe the private sector stakeholders would have access to kasi experience nila na, uy, alam mo yung mayor namin, sobrang bait, ginagawa to, ganyan. We wouldn't know that. So, yeah. So, let's all work together on gathering data so that we can uh, properly defend our proposals. But certainly, we will work on the three Um, recommendations of uh, Rights Action Philippines. And we look forward to closer collaboration with the LCP um, in uh, increasing the membership of the Philippine Creative Cities Network um, and data gathering. Okay, so we'll now move on to the second topic, which is welfare. So we have invited here government agencies from DOLE, SSS uh, and PhilHealth. Um, and so I believe Dole and SSS are going to be presenting and PhilHealth will not present, but they are willing to answer questions from the members of the committee and even the private sector will allow you to ask questions. Um, and then from the private sector, it will be the Artists' Welfare Project. Uh, Miss Jenny Bonto will be presenting. So we'll start with Dole. You have the floor.
chole. Com sec. Um, sir, madaming galing sa tole, but I'm not sure kung sino sa kanila yung mag-present. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Hi, Grace. Go ahead. This is Grace from the Bureau of Local Employment. Maybe uh, because attending uh, in this meeting are two bureaus of the department, uh, the Bureau of Local Employment and the Bureau of Working Conditions. So from the BLE's end, we will just present Paul the employment situation for the creative industry. So these are the labor market information. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so um, as mentioned earlier, this is a brief uh, presentation po on the labor market situation of the creative industry. And as we know, based on the 20, 2009 Philippine Standard uh, Industrial Classification or PSIC, um, sorry, the creative industry covers three different divisions. Division 59 covers uh, the motion picture, video, and television program production, some recording and music publishing activities. Division 74 covers other professional, scientific, and technical activities. And Division 90 covers creative arts and, entertainments and, and entertainment activities. And this is where uh, visual artists or visual arts uh, mainly fall. So for the period of 2016 to 2019, Employment in the creative industry continuously increased from 88,000 workers in 2016 to 101,000 workers in 2019. However, due to the implementation of uh, community quarantines to alleviate the transmission of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, from last year, employment dropped in the information and communication sector, professional, scientific, and technical activity sector, and of course, the arts, entertainment, and recreation were in the specific divisions of, from the creative industry are part of. Uh, this is just the overall um, employment uh, situation. Uh, this is at the national level. So uh, we are all familiar with this that uh, last year uh, in 2020, records, records highs and lows in our key employment indicators were uh, recorded with unemployment rate at 89.7% and unemployment at 10.3% based on the four rounds of average of the four rounds of the labor force surveys. And this is the lowest and highest respectively since 2015. And um, at 6.9%, uh, we are also we also recorded our lowest unemployment rate since April last year. So, however, underemployment has climbed to twenty point nine percent, and that is the highest since the pandemic. So, as we are all aware, in all and in all uh, across all industries, last year the ILO published the COVID nineteen labor market impact on in the Philippines, and it validated that the pandemic's impact was manifested through a spike in the unemployment rate a fall in labor force participation rate, significant reduction in working hours, and a large swell in the fraction of workers who are currently employed but were absent from work. So on this screen, you would see for the top and bottom five major industry groups according to employment growth during the pandemic, uh, agriculture, hunting, and forestry uh, dominated the list. With the most or with the most number or most highest increase in terms of employment at one, 1. 1.4 million. And then as expected, uh, accommodation and food service industry naman po, uh, is the highest in terms of um, the bottom five, experiencing the most job loss during the pandemic. The arts and entertainment recreation were also hit by the pandemic, and this affects our visual artists with 59,000 um, reduction in terms of employment. So as mentioned earlier, these are the three major uh, divisions uh, based on the PSIC. 
And there is an increase of 69,000 workers in the information and communication sector and 21,000 in the professional and scientific and technical activity sector, while there is a decrease of 59,000 workers in the arts, entertainment, and recreation sector. That is from uh, 2019 versus August 2021 labor force survey. And this is our last slide po. Uh, elementary occupations and um, service and sales generated the most jobs during the pandemic, while managers suffered the worst contraction at 31% growth. Uh, visual artists with a PISOC code of 2651, they are part of the professionals that ranked ninth with a, decrement, with a decrease of 326,000 workers or employment loss of 14% last year. So that's uh, our presentation po, uh, basically just a labor market information uh, situationer for the visual artists. And I pass the floor now to our colleagues from the Bureau of Working Conditions. All right, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if you could uh, give us uh, five minutes more to present. Oh, hi, Mark. Hello. And hello po, uh, Congress, uh, Congressman Tau. Can I share my screen now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I will be discussing uh, in the next five minutes yung comments pa ng Dole sa House Resolution Number 02035 uh, calling this uh, consultation meeting in aid of uh, legislation. Okay, so I would not uh, de uh, dwell much on this because na na discussed that uh, Congressman Tov kanina sa introduction. I will go directly po ito sa comments po namin. Okay, but prior to that, okay, as discussed po a while back, uh, uh, from our perspective, the creative industries have been seen to become increasingly important to economic well-being. Thus, the Department of Labor and, and Employment supports in entirely, entirety the creation of law that shall protect and secure the exclusive rights of artists. So for our comments, number one, of course, the creative and collaborative nature of work in this industry has resulted in a proliferation of diverse working arrangements for creative industry workers. So at present, uh, these are extremely diversified employment conditions and decent work issues within the sector and it is against this backdrop that the Dole suggests for the inclusion of provision, provisions on labor standards in the, in the draft measure that will come out of this consultation. Uh, for our recommendation, we have uh, only five lang naman. Ano pa? Number one, of course, is we would want to recommend that uh, the types of employment relationships and the need for flexibility and independence among the workers in creative industries must not weaken the workers' right to equitable treatment regardless of their contractual relationship. Uh, perhaps we could model yung DOLE, uh, FDCP, uh, Joint Memorandum Circular, no? kasi alam naman natin, no? sa movies medyo related din yan sa creative industry kasi uh, yung uh, majority of workers there no, are out, are independent contractors but then it does not mean na pagka independent contractor ka eh ano ka na hindi ka na maprotektahan po na ng ating labor laws number 2 it can also be noted that there are various work arrangements for creative industries as for independent contractors and those whom we call as freelancers who are usually paid by results. The required remunerations and other benefits must be within the bounds of the civil code and the labor code as may be applicable. I believe, uh, Congressman Top, meron na po kayong ano po, no? house bill for uh, freelancers na sa gig economy. Kung sana maipasa po yun, ano po, uh, we could uh, refer itong uh, ilalabas nating uh, uh, law for uh, creative uh, artists no? sa 
uh, sa sa gig economy na sa freelancers na ano ba, na lo na lalabas pa. Then number three, the department proposes to expand the scope of the proposed measure to include the safety and health of workers in creative industries. Okay? So, pwede nating include po yung work hours, yung mandatory OSH trainings, programs on mental health and other applicable provisions of RA 11058 or the OSH law. The problem with ano po kasi, no? With, uh, with, uh, yung sa creative industry, eh, yung peculiarities and of course yung nuances ng work nila. Uh, minsan nag-work sila ng mahabang oras. Ano? And of course, uh, yung sa health nila, magsasuffer po yun ano? uh, later on. So maganda po na meron po silang uh, mga... Kasi it's part of self-regulation. Eh. Wala naman silang self-safety officer o kaya OH personnel no? na tritingin sa kanila. So I'm glad nandito din po na no? yung SSS at yung field health ano pa kasi part din po ng occupational uh, safety and health namin eh hindi lang sa prevention ano uh, we also ano uh, promote yung ano yung mga safety nets no halimbawa magkasakit sila or maaksidente at least yung social welfare benefits no uh, may nakaabang sa kanila na tulong. And number four, it is also proposed to include concrete guidance around measures needed to ensure that workers in the creative industries can adapt to the work of the future, including actions to adjust to the current market and the training of workers in the light of technological advancements. Ayan. So, pwede na natin itong ano, ano, i-relate sa mga training na nire-request ng, ano, ano, ng mga, uh, mga partners natin kanina. Uh, okay, mga naunang ano, ano, uh, nagsalita po sa atin. And lastly, number five, provision for participation in collective or fully enjoy freedom of association as well as their access to basic social protections are also being proposed for inclusion in the proposed act. Okay, so I'm glad no? marami na palang ano po, no? mga association na, na, na form na no? uh, ng creative industry. So they just need to ano siguro no magkaroon po sila ng ano eh sabi nga sa discussion kanina uh, sino yung mamamahala sa kanila, sino yung uh, didinig ng kanilang mga grievances no. So we believe kasi itong uh, freedom of association na yung pagpo-form nila ng mga organization is a platform for social dialogue, for discussion ng mga issues and concerns na maaring kaharapin po nila. So I think uh, in conclusion po, of course, ano po, no? uh, in sum, we support po yung objectives and uh, purposes ng, ano, ng resolution po. Okay? Subject to the above comments and recommendations. Okay? I think uh, that's my last slide po, uh, Congressman. Po. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. To our Dole family. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move on to SSS. We have uh, Carlo Villacorta, acting head of the professional sector department. and concurrent acting head of the cooperatives and informal sector department. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, it's an honor for me to be here and uh, to present uh, um, on the area of uh, visual artists' welfare issues. So we'll be presenting SSS coverage of uh, workers in the visual arts and other related industries. Share, shared screen na po ako. So, um, I'm Carlo Villacorta. Yes, I'm acting head of the professional sector department and cooperatives and informal sector department. So, collectively, we handle the coverage and collection program for self-employed. So, workers in visual arts and other related industries are employed or self-employed. Employed. employed they, their SSS registration and contributions are handled by their employer. For those who are self-employed, SSS registration and contributions are handled by themselves. 
Currently, uh, as regards self-employed workers in visual arts and other related industries, we are coordinating with Philippine Statistics Authority for data on total number of self-employed workers in visual arts and other related industries, as well as data on other self-employed occupations. Po. SSS registration data as of June 2021 that conforms to the 2012 Philippine Standard Occupational Code, we have on our records 237 visual artists registered with SSS. Uh, for the other related industries, uh, 1,281 musicians, singers, composers, 675 dancers and choreographers, 145 directors, 401 actors, 377 announcers, and 6,204 creative and performing artists registered po with SSS, Mr. Chair. So uh, SSS continues to reach out to all these self-employed workers through our information education campaign social media accounts we are on facebook we are on youtube viber instagram and twitter uh, we respectfully contend that there is already so many materials in terms of how to uh, learn about the various sss programs and we appeal among self-employed workers to just take some time in terms of uh, checking out SSS social media accounts to learn more about the SSS programs. Uh, we also have uh, regular member education programs, daily webinars. Sometimes this could be company requested webinars so we can conduct it specifically for particular groups. Uh, we also perform email and or text blasts. blasts and also other outlets, the traditional modes of uh, being on TV, radio, print, etc. We also, Mr. Chair, reach out to professional associations of visual artists and other related industries. We reach out to them directly for partnership arrangements. Uh, the softest partnership arrangement could be information dissemination arrangements but we kindly ask them still if they are willing to uh, accept a little bit of extra work to facilitate registration and contributions collection arrangements. Uh, from the middle of last year, we have emailed about 59 of such groups, uh, including uh, Mr. Chair groups that uh, provide venue or platform to such visual artists. And we've met with some of them online uh, over the course. Um, we would be happy, Mr. Chair, to receive a, a directory or contact with contact people who we can reach out to to directly uh, uh, explain or uh, present the programs of SSS for such self-employed workers in visual arts and other related industries. Uh, perhaps it is uh, significant to put uh, some numbers as regards the benefits of SSS. The following benefits may be availed if registered with SSS as, as self-employed and contributing regularly as self-employed. Um, just to provide the minimum and maximum, Mr. Chair, the minimum contribution of a self-employed person to SSS is at 400 pesos per month. And the maximum contribution to SSS is at 3,280 pesos per month. It is more or less 13% uh, of, of a person's salary. Po. Uh, we present here average amount of benefits as of July 2021 data of SSS, just to provide a flavor. Um, in terms of retirement pensions, we are currently on the average paying out 4,823 pesos. In terms of disability, 4,282 pesos per month. 
death, 3,869 pesos per month for the beneficiaries of SSS members who passed away. And uh, lump sum benefits in the case of funeral, that's 23,000 pesos uh, uh, average. Sickness, 9,000. Maternity, uh, 38,500 uh, lump sum benefit. And our perhaps our most popular program, the salary loan program, on the average, we loan out around 24,649. We also present here, Mr. Chair, uh, kindly, the number of contributions required for eligibility for to the benefits mentioned here. So uh, if I may continue very quickly, for retirement monthly pension, uh, a worker must have paid at least 120 contributions to be eligible for a monthly pension when he or she retires at age 60 or later. Uh, we contend, uh, Mr. Chair, respectfully, that 120 contributions is very reasonable and easy to attain. Because typically, marami naman po sa atin ang may kakaya ng maghanap buhay for 40 years, for example, from age 20 to 60. And SSS only requires 10 years worth of contributions and you'll be assured of a monthly pension come uh, old age. Uh, it is a very, it is an even stronger argument, Mr. Chair, with regard to our disability and death pension programs that require only 36 contributions in case ho na matindi ang disgrasya o sakit, basta may 36 contributions po yung member, protected po siya or ang kanyang pamilya with a monthly dis disability or death pension benefit from SSS. So I can proceed uh, along the other benefits for funeral. We only require, require one benefit, uh, one contribution to be eligible to a funeral benefit. And the sickness and maternity and salary loan programs require very few contributions within the recent past months, which state that SSS members should be actively paying contributions to enjoy the whole gamut of social security benefits. Moreover, Mr. Chair, I'm spending a lot of time on this slide. If the contingency is work-related, even for self-employed, they can claim additional EC benefits. EC stands for Employees Compensation, Mr. Chair. Employees' compensation benefits if the sickness, accident, or death is work-related. And basta ho nakapaghulog ang isang self-employed, uh, uh, as a self-employed, he or she is eligible to these uh, amounts of benefits. So bale, more or less, Mr. Chair, dumodoble po ang benefits if the contingency is work-related. Of course, these are subject to a few other qualifying conditions, but these are the most important uh, requirement po, yung contributions payment. Uh, if I may uh, expound on the amount of monthly contributions by a self-employed member, uh, this is SSS Circular 2020-034B, which serves as the guide. So the minimum monthly contribution for a self-employed worker, Mr. Chair, is uh, 400 pesos. And you see here po yung breakdown. It is based on someone who was earning up to 3,250 per month, modest earnings in a month. Pero ito lang po ang kailangan ibayad sa SSS, 400 pesos. The breakdown is shown here. 390 pesos for regular social security na portion and 10 pesos every month for employees compensation coverage. On the other side, uh, we show the maximum monthly contributions of a self-employed worker. It is based on monthly earnings of at least 24,750 
with a corresponding monthly salary credit of 25,000 pesos. So this is the contribution amount for someone who is earning at least 25,000 all the way up po. So in other words, SSS is covering up to 25,000 pesos of a person's salary po. So you see here the breakdown, 2,600 pesos every month for regular social security program, 30 pesos po for employees compensation program. And for the first time starting this year, as, uh, a portion goes to mandatory provident fund. We call it the workers and investment and savings program, which uh, deduct additional contributions from those who are earning higher than 20,000 pesos every month. Yung mga matas, taas po ang salary bracket so that they can enjoy additional benefits upon retirement from the provident fund po. So to bring us to a total of 3,280 pesos for the maximum monthly contribution po, Mr. Chair. So uh, again, on the monthly pension benefits, perhaps it is uh, significant to, to share here that the minimum amount being paid out currently is 2,000 pesos per month. And the maximum that we are paying out currently is 19,150 pesos per month. We reiterate our message uh, to be eligible for monthly retirement pension. You, you must have paid at least 120 contributions. For death or disability pension, you must have paid at least 36 contributions. If you do not meet the contribution requirement for eligibility to a pension, the benefit po will be a lump sum amount. Pero Mr. Chair, thousands of pesos pa rin po yun kahit lump sum amount. Finally, depending on the benefit to be availed, transaction with SSS may be through online, drop box po at our branches or over the counter at our branches. So in a nutshell, yun po, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Salamat, ingat po. Thank you so Thanks. much, Ricardo. Um, so now we'll move on to PhilHealth. Uh, yes, I understand they don't have a presentation, but can we get a commitment that they would be willing to ask questions, rather answer questions? PhilHealth. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Hi, Mel. Uh, yes, po. Um, um, yes, po. We're um, we're going to answer questions if there are any, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge our legislative liaison officer designate, Miss Jenny Escueta, who just joined the meeting. Uh, who who will join? I uh, hear in the lab. Uh, um. So, Mel. Can you just give us like a, I mean, just a brief sharing at least if there's no deck to be presented. Uh, so visual artists qualify for PhilHealth. They're covered by the Universal Healthcare Act. So, Good afternoon, sir. Jenny Escueta po. Oh, hi, Jenny. Yeah, Ay, go yes, ahead. Sir. Opo, everyone's uh, covered naman na po. Okay. So for, ano po, for uh, based on RA uh, uh, 11223, Universal Healthcare Act, Everyone's covered in the health. Uh, for the purpose of this ano po, uh, bill, uh, for our visual artists and for other creative arts members of the industry, uh, yung indigents po identified uh, through the DSWD National Household Directing System, sila po will be covered under the National Government Subsidy Program, Indigent Program. For those naman po that, uh, that are employed, uh, yung premium sharing po between the employer and the employee under the uh, employed uh, program po ng PhilHealth. And then for those self-employed naman po uh, uh, or other members of the informal economy uh, will be covered by PhilHealth uh, under the voluntary membership or the individually paying program. So how does that work? Um, if um, most, of the, most of the visual arts... Uh, stakeholders are self-employed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If uh, if ever po there are poor na uh, self uh, ano uh, visual artists natin na na hospitalized, 
pwede rin po sila maging member through the point of service. Uh, sa point of service po, uh, usually at this point po, puro na sa, na, sa government hospital po yan, uh, parang hospital sponsorship po sila. Mm. Under the national government pa rin po yung subsidy noon, uh, it's part of the expansion of the UHC program. So kung sakali naman po na at this point they are already capable of paying their premium, pwede naman po sila mag-self-employed. Uh, voluntary membership, individually paying members naman po yun. So ngayon po, kung mag-member po sila, wala po pong penalty, wala po pong uh, increase in premium contribution kasi nasa pandemic pa po tayo. This is a very good opportunity for them to be part of the program since hindi pa po tayo nag increase ng premium. Okay. All right. So yes, siguro we'll have a we'll we'll entertain questions later for Phil Health on this topic. Okay, All right. Thanks. Um. So we'll move on to the private sector. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, uh, Jenny. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair, I will start sharing my screen. So this is my screen. Uh, I hope you can see it. Okay. So magandang hapon sa lahat ng nakikinig at nakasubaybay. Good afternoon to all our legislators today. I am Jenny Bonto. I'm Executive Director of Artists Welfare Project. Thank you for allowing us to join these discussions and how to forward the visual arts industry, noting existing rights and welfare issues they are facing today. Ang AUPI po ay uh, nag-organize in 2007 after artists and culture leaders realized, you know, we passed the hat each time a colleague was sick, de dying, dead, or in a financial situation. Hindi sustainable yung pass the hat. We would launch fundraising activities for colleagues, but sometimes it was not enough or too late and there was donor fatigue. So artist leaders organized the AOP and we had it registered. AOP turned 13 years old this year, yay, and is led by our board members. Uh, ang aming chairperson, uh, IC Fernando Sef, President Carmela Manuel, Ronnie Lazaro, Vice Chair, Secretary po namin, Dennis Marsigan, Treasurer namin, ay si Lisa Macuales-Salde. Yun po. Um, sa aming... AOP champions the rights and welfare of creatives. Any artist or cultural worker who earns from their creative work or is part of the creative ecosystem is welcome to join. Right now, AOP has 600 members under the healthcare program. We launched it five years ago. And uh, 15,000 creatives in our data lake. So uh, in our list, of uh, 15,000 creatives, we have 3,500 who are visual artists. That's about 23%. I just want to explain how we got this 15,000. Before the pandemic, we only had 600. But when the pandemic hit, we knew that we, all were, we were all freelancers and we were not going to have amelioration because we're not Dole doesn't will not be able to help those who are not um, uh, employed. Kasi <laughs> self-employed kami. So, like shout out kami. Sinabi namin, we have to gang together so that we can ask Dole to help us. So, uh, we got 7,000 from different uh, provinces. And then, uh, the open house wanted to help out uh, our co-creatives, we opened up a list and about 2,000 people entered there. And then the National Live Events Coalition also had that. So umabot yan ng 15,000. And AOP became the data sentry in charge of safekeeping those data. Uh, this, the visual artists, they describe themselves as photographers, animators, 3D artists po kami, airbrush craftsmen, production designer po ako, graphic artists, sculptures, makeup artists, production illustrators, art teachers, metal, and more. 
And they also says they are parents, their sons, sisters, daughters, brothers, neighbors, parents, PWG, LGBT. So ganyan po ang visual artists na nasa, nasa community ng artist welfare. And para kaming help desk, so uh, for the past few months, ito yung mga phone-in uh, questions or tulong na umaabot sa AOP. Nandiyan na po ang mga comments na Miss Jenny, the fabricator made extra copies without my knowledge. Anong gagawin ko? Miss Jenny, they cropped my photo and used it on their fa Facebook page without my knowledge. Miss Jenny, they lock us in rooms and they, we can't leave until we finish that cartoon segment. Miss Jenny, how many drafts must be submitted? We submitted the work but still haven't received payment. Miss Jenny, we want to apply for the grant but we don't have papers they require. Paano ba yun? The work we brought back from abroad, di na benta, ay eh, pag ibabalik natin sa Pilipinas, itatax. Paano yun? Wala kaming pera. I can, meron pinaka-classic, I can teach art at the university, but they want me to hide my tattoos and cut my long hair, Miss Jenny. So, it, itong teacher po ng artist, art teacher na to ay nag-design na lang sa university na yun. Um, so in the past, but what I want to share is an actual artist. Param, kasi three-dimensional po kami. So I'd like you to meet Ted, Nicol Ted Nicolau Kamahalan. Yan po si Sir Ted. Kasama rin natin ngayon. Si Sir Ted ay nagka-caricature. Pwede kayo magpa-caricature sa kanya. Uh, he's an animator, a painter, a muralist, a teacher, and also an LP board member. Kaya madali kung nakuha ang kanyang oo nung sabi ko siya yung iha-highlight ko. So, si, si Sir Ted, um, siya ay active in the artist community. He teaches young talents. He works as a freelance artist. He joins cultural events and actively networks with visual artists. At the peak of the animation industry years ago, he applied and was approved by Pag-ibig to invest on a housing plan for his family. Ang saya-saya. But like any other freelancer, there are times when gaps between gigs and sale becomes too wide that making ends meet becomes a wider, greater challenge. And this happened. So nakakatakot, di ba? Kasi pag hindi ka nakakabayad, matatanggal ang iyong yung housing. So the risk of losing their home affected his health. He later needed a retina operation because of his stress. And the doctors at PGH Health, marami pong salamat. Again, friends passed the hat. And anyway, he was able to save the other eye. With three schooling children, his wife sustained their family by selling barbecue. But with much stress soon, he was able to talk to Pag-ibig and reorganize the loans. But best of all, mga kaibigan, he didn't let the tragedy get the best of him. He continued to paint and now continue to sell his works. So nakikita niya yung aso, parang yung mata iba, yung mata. So parang mas naging interesting pa nga ang kanyang obra. But I'm so proud of Sir Ted because siya talaga yung story niya resonates to a lot of uh, visual artists that has the same struggle. In behalf of the visual artists in the country, we seek to help what we love to do because believe it or not, measure it or not, visual artists contribute to nation building. We need access to affordable materials. Alam mo, pag limited po ang funds ninyo, you can only buy four colors of paint instead of five. Tapos pag tinignan mo yung resibo, the recibo can actually pay for an extra brush or a better quality paint. And visual artists, they, they have different kinds of materials. Before my, I had a, a bukol, I had a brain tumor. I was using, before, before that, I was using uh, Coronia nail polish para sa aking paint. Excited na excited ako, tapos nakakapaint ako sa glass. Pero yung pala, bad yun. Huwag niyong gagawin yun. Um, Another thing, we need access to training, mentoring. Alam mo, it's very hard to get into universities that teach art. Uh, baka naman the universities can 
do outreach. Yung mga one kilometer radius ng university, they can help their art communities to to support them and and join them to be, become part of the university community. They're really not enough. Ang hirap hirap pumasok sa University of the Philippines Fine Arts. Another thing, um, we need help in marketing and access to markets that we need, we can trust. Kasi minsan, di ba, magkano ang cut sa, ng, sa galleries? 50%, 40%, ilan na lang naiiwan sa'yo. Doon sa 60% na naiwan sa'yo, siguro ilang percent on materials mo in time. And also access to space where they can do their art and sell their art. Meron po tayong mga parks. Yung mga painters pupunta doon, magkakarikature, yung mga tourists masaya. Pero ang hirap minsan pumasok sa parks and kailangan mo magbayad. Another, I, I'd like to share this, this uh, project that we did. Noong 2019, nakakuha ng grant ang isang barangay sa Dulag Leyte. Ang pangalan ng barangay nila ay San Isidro, Barangay San Isidro. So this is Lunti ang Puok project. So 2019 nakakuha. So 2020 dapat nila gawin yung uh, garden. C uh, NCCA will bring in uh, funds para matuto sila about landscape gardening. Kaya lang nag-2020, nagkaroon ng pandemic. So baka hindi matuloy. So anyway, tinuloy pa din namin. Tinulungan namin yung uh, LGU. Uh, nat natuloy ang kanilang dunti ang puok. Tapos ang problema, kailangan picturean yung existing mga 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 plants na nandoon, mga endemic na nandoon. Kaya lang yung photographers, hindi makakapunta doon. So what we did, sabi namin, uh, Barangay Captain Romeo Creer, meron ka bang mga kilala dyan na may phone? May phone, smartphone, tuturuan namin sila magpicture. So online, tinuruan namin sila magpicture like this. So yung dalawang bagets na nagpicture taking, picture taking, you know, we, we taught them photography online. And they learned a lot. They learned a lot na nakakuha na sila ng magagandang photo. At hindi lang yon nalagay nila sa isang uh, website. Hindi lang yon nagawa, nakapublish na ng libro. Yung maliit na barangay na yon na ang ganda na ng garden nila, hindi nila akala ay makakapublish sila ng libro. And all these things, uh, sa pakikipagtulungan ng NCCA at saka ng LGU, yan po si Attorney Mildred Kena. We we're very, very, um, very, very proud of this. Kasi that's materials training, that's marketing, that's space, and that's digitization. Dig digitization, digitalization, we cannot really uh, get out of it. Another thing that we need is healthcare benefits um, na affordable. Uh, salamat po sa PhilHealth at SSS uh, na nandito. Uh, talaga namang 400 a month parang affordable, di ba? Kaya lang minsan, we, we're talking about grassroots people. Eh. Sometimes if you have 400, that's really how many kilos of rice already. But, you know, uh, we still promote it. Or maybe we, for the visual artists, they really need help with their eyes and their lungs. Art materials, mga paints, they're really chemicals by nature. Amelioration, marami pong salamat. Thank you. Kung hindi nag-push yung Achieve at saka sila, sir, uh, sila Kong Tof, uh, so Bayanihan 2, hindi na ilagay yung mga freelancers sa Bayanihan 2 amelioration. Problema nga lang, out of 15,000, 1,000 lang ang na-approve. We need legal help with contracts and representation. Mahina kami doon. Parang subtitle pa lang ng contract, natatakot na kami. At natatakot kami sa mga lawyers kasi English sila ng English. Kaya lang, I mean, if we can have access to uh, maybe paralegal, I was talking to a paralegal group yesterday, and maybe they can help us understand the contracts like that or, or write the contracts. In this industry kasi, pag nagreklamo ka, you, are, you risk not getting the next gig. Ito po, two weeks ago lang, may isang painter na nag-reach out sa AOP, nagpapabenta sa amin ng pwede niyo ba, Miss Jenny, ibenta yan kahit 8,000 pesos. That's, uh, that's a painting, it's two feet. Dahil kailangan niya ng 
pambili ng gatas para sa baby niya. And siya ay isang single father. We get this every day. And uh, nung nabigyan siya ng 2,000 pesos from a, a donation, tuwan-tuwa siya kasi makakabili, siya na, makakabili na siya ng bon na meal na milk na malaki. Alam mo yung isang, isang kilo na milk. Kasi meron na siyang pera for that. Another thing that we need, Mr. Chair, mga grants, um, mga grants for individual and groups. Um, it's not enough what we have now. And sometimes it's the same group that gets awarded kasi sila yung may mga papeles. And sometimes really paperwork is daunting. Totoo yung kinuwento ni Sir Kanina. And how about tax incentives to corporations who will support art? AOP right now is uh, trying to make a manual that can be online and alam mo how to how to be a professional freelance artist, visual artist. This is what you do. This is your helpline. You get a DTI, you get a BIR, you get an SSS, like that. So we want to promote that. And lastly, uh, we need inclusivity, the freedom to associate. Actually, madaming mga associations ngayon, eh, mga Monday group, Tuesday group, Wednesday group. But you know, how do we make these associations uh, synergize for the industry. Another thing, yung resale fees, maganda talaga yung idea ng resale fees kasi kahit na mabenta ng mabenta yung painting mo, at least 5% goes back to you. Kaya lang it doesn't happen eh. Hirap i-monitor. Pero you know, that's really a, a good idea. We want to support that, but how? We also need, um, at the minimum, we need respect. At the least, mention that the photograph was taken by Juan or Juana. If someone sees the photo and likes, likes it, maybe he or she might land a project. We do what we love. It's more than a hobby. It's a livelihood. More than a livelihood, it's an inspiration, an aspiration. We are effective labor. Behind the visual artist is the artist. Behind the artist is the community whom he hopes respects and supports him. And behind the community are leaders like you who has the power to champion his rights and welfare. Do this and the visual artist will flourish for everybody's gains. He and his work will nurture the soul of this nation. Side comment lang. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a creative economy uh, uh, work, workshop uh, study for two months. Salamat sa, sa tip ni Congressman Toff. Out of 600 applicants, this is sponsored by UNESCO and University of London and Korea. Um, parang 30 lang from ASEAN countries ang nakapasok. And I, I promised Congressman Toff to that lahat ng learnings ko, I will share to the community. And now, I, let me give you, uh, let, take this chance to share. This is from uh, a study made by Andy C. Pratt that he says, regardless of policy making, it does seem that we already have a huge cohort of workers in the cultural sector that are precarious or freelance laborers. They may, some of them, earn good money some of the time, but they have no certainty. If we are to sustain livelihoods in this sphere, we need to develop a compatible social welfare system that supports it, not one built upon the idea of male workers in a career for their working lives. Ito po ang isang picture na kinuha ko to capture anong state ng ating visual arts artist. So you have a before and after. Ngayon po, hindi ko alam kung ano nung, anong kwento na dun sa photo bomber, pero pag nakita niyo yan, makikita natin kung ano ba yung pinaprioritize natin. So yung mga photograph, bago yung photo bomber, sobrang priceless na nun. Lastly, uh, I just wanna mention what we do. So we advocate rights of artists by serving our community with lawyers for artists, uh, pro bono work. Hello sa IPO Phil, super sipag. We attend hearings. The hearings, Eddie Garcia, lahat ng hearing na pwede atanag. We drop everything. Pag tumawag yung Congress, tumawag sila, Sir Toff. 
we drop everything we attend. Lalo na, lalo na ngayong pandemya na isang Zoom. We also have partnered uh, with Asian Institute of Maritime Studies. We have a master's degree on uh, for artists. Master's degree course ito. Ito yung uh, sana makakabridge ng gap dun sa mga mga artists na pwedeng tumulong sa sa kanilang LGU. Ang mga uh, courses po namin dito ay Kamalayan Pilipino, Heritage, Governance, Social Entrepreneurship, Arts Marketing, and Creative Industries, among others. We also have Aupi Talks on Financial Literacy, Grant Writing, Voters' Rights, Copyrights. Shout out sa PhilHealth SSS, pag-ibig lagi namin silang uh, sinasama pag may gathering kami before the pandemic, maglalagay kami ng kiosk, pupunta sila doon, magpapasign up. Maybe we can do that again online. We'll just ask all these 15,000 people na wala ba kayong SSS, halika na, game na, mag-online mag -online tayo ng isang bagsak. Um, we also have the HMO for artists where at least 100 artists will pay 10 to 13,000 fee uh, a year. We partner with Coco Life. It, it translates to 75,000 worth of checkups, hospitalizations, lab fees, dental fees, fees, bunot all you want, and uh, even COVID fees. Alam niyo po, since last year, four members passed away and their families were given 10,000 pesos burial assistance. Hindi, imagine, hindi kami nag-pass lahat, pero nakabigay kami ng 10,000 sa mga naiwan ng mga namatay na members. We also have uh, mental health talks and others. Nung medical mission kami before sa CCP, it was so fun. We also, we, we partner with these institutions. Salamat sa sa CCP, NCA, IPO, Filth, ang FDCP, mga tatlong daang members namin ang nakakuha ng um, bakuna. Marami pong salamat. And all this, uh, we also partner with uh, uh, private organizations and of course our uh, art organizations na patuloy naming you know, pinupush na go, go and uh, uh, and group, group ourselves together and we will synergize. Lastly po, ito ang aming GCash. You can scan it if you like to donate. And if you want to join us, it's 1,000 peso membership fee or 5,000 for a lifetime. Join the coming HMO for Artists in March. Ongoing po ang Marsas Degree. Tatlong taon po namin yan inasikaso at just ko at least na launch na namin. And uh, please contact us through the social media. Isang shout out lang, we're so proud ng 44th Gawad Urian. Ito yung mga AOP members na nakakuha ng mga natatanging karangalan. At dyan po si Benjamin Padero, Carlo Tahibe, Rolando Incensio. Sila ay nanominate na Best Production Design. They're, very, they're, they're part of the Visual Artist Group. Actually, lahat naman sila. Shout out, Best Actor, Tada Nanding, I Love You. And lastly, Para we we to close to close this on a high note and a hopeful note, because this guy really brings a lot of hope. Belated happy birthday, Congressman Tov de Venecia. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you, Pop. Salamat. <laughs> happy birthday, Pop. Tov. Kong. Birthday. Happy birthday, Kong. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, wow. Happy birthday, po. I'm speechless. I somehow did it to the slide of Artist Thank you so much. No, but really, thank you to Artist Welfare Project. Uh, they are, I think, our closest and longest collaborator of all organizations we work with. And it's been such a pleasure and an honor um, fighting the good fight with you guys. So thank you. And we really rely on organizations talaga, like Alfie to be able to work on policy for the sector. Because government really cannot do it on its own. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so that closes the presentations on uh, the second topic on welfare issues. If any members wish to ask questions, you have the floor. Um, Kong Kiko, Kong Koko, Kong Ria. All right, so if not, uh, I'd like to start with my own. Um, with Dole, uh, 
this the no this is the labor force survey conducted i'm guessing by the psa account for freelancers hi mr chair um if i'm not mistaken at the moment it does not pop ah okay are there any efforts to sort of adjust the parameters to do so or is that a question for psa uh, maybe best address the PSA, sir, but we will also check if um, if there are any, in any of the interagency committee meetings, if there's been a mention of it. Sige. Um, let's also write, uh, no, you know what, Comsec, let's bring this up with USEC FITA. Uh, because she is already in talks with PSA for the satellite account. So maybe the labor force survey can also be adjusted. All right, thank you. Um, the second question would be, uh, can we disaggregate uh, visual artists from the professional uh, category uh, that was shared in one of your slides, Ma'am Grace? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, because the problem with PSIC, um, it only provides for two-digit codes, but uh, we'll see if visual artists would uh, float in up I think there would be up to four codes but that would have to be requested for from PSA also because the public use files only provide for the two codes two digit codes okay so yeah so included also in our communications with you Fita Luis thanks um uh thank you ma'am Grace uh quickly uh with Sir Mark um could you explain to us further ano ba yung benefit ng collective bargaining? Uh, okay. So, yung ano po kasi, no? yung collective bargaining, uh, mag-apply lang po siya really no? sa, ano eh, sa uh, organized establishment. Now, when we say organized, uh, as a general rule, sir, ha? Uh, when we say organized uh, sa mga uh, establishments na meron pong employee-employer relationship. Pwede silang bumuo ng union or association and mm. could uh, request for the employer no? uh, additional benefits no? beyond what is required by the labor code. But then, uh, through the years, nag evolve na rin po ito, sir. No? Uh, yung kasambahay law, for instance, although, syempre, uh, yung mga uh, kasambahay, uh, sa general, di ba, minsan isa lang sila sa isang household, but then yung kalsambahay law empowered them to ano, to organize themselves no? para magkaroon sila ng voice, no? ng bosses para marinig. Yung, as an avenue for social dialogue, yung mga issues and concerns, madali pong maiparating po sa, sa government. So ang nakikita ko po sa ano, no? yung i- i-align po natin na, na yung principle ng collective bargaining sa ano sa creative arts na no? although as mentioned kanina most of them are not in the formal employment ano kasi uh, ano sila eh uh, more of uh, independent contractors ano or uh, self employed karamihan yeah. sa kanila but they can they can always ano naman uh, band together uh, join themselves ano and request for these uh, benefits sa ano sa government as part ng ano nila ng ng advocacy at of course mapaangat din yung quality of life sa so, chat sir if i may lang no, na i-share ko rin naman na ang dole aside from sa mga formal employment ano may, we also provide livelihood assistance na baka pwedeng i-access din ng mga organizations or individuals no, na nasa hanin ng creative arts to augment their income para lang ano po no uh, we don't uh, give yung seed money but we what we give is yung ano eh yung mga materials and mga equipment na needed na po nila no so nila magkaroon ng bakery uh, bigyan namin sila ng oven mga mga gamit sa pagbe-bake ganyan sa so, nila mag ano ng calendar ya may ganun din no may kalan may mga tables and chairs na no? uh, they could always ano naman go to our uh, our regional offices and meron naman pong ano mga templated ano kasi nakita kan nabanggit kanina yung mga project proposals 
templated naman po na sir yung anak yung project proposals and they will be ably assisted ng aming mga ano po aming mga tao po sa regional office para ma-access po yung ano yung mga livelihood assistance na kailangan po nila no kung gusto po nilang ano no? ma-augment din yung income po nila So Sir Mark, hindi na nila kailangan dumaan through mga ponente of endorsement. Pwede nang dumiretso sa regional offices. Ay, yes po sir. Uh, walang problema po. No? In fact, uh, if I may share lang, no? uh, open naman po sa lahat yung, ano, yung request. No? So ang requirement lang, eh, ano talaga? Uh, I advise lang na they group themselves together kasi mas malaki po yung grant na maibigay po ni Dole kapag ka grupo as compared sa individual po. Wala right. na pong ano, uh, endorsement na ano po na Great. na kailangan. Pwede silang magpunta po doon uh, on their own. Sige, so I think we need the help of the advocacy groups. Uh, there were 59 that were mentioned by SSS earlier. I hope that includes LP and Rights Action. Um but To the advocacy groups who are with us here today, uh, I hope we are able to take note of that uh, service of the DOLE. They do provide livelihood assistance. Pwede kayong dumiretso sa regional offices nila. And uh, the, the more members there are in the group, the bigger the grant that can be accessed. So I hope we were able to take note of that. Thank you for sharing that, Sir Mark. Um, I just want to make a uh, quick comment on the need to upskill our creative workers. So thankfully, that's accounted for in the creative industry bill. Um, and also, we noted uh, the need to amend the OSH law uh, to include the creative industries. Um, and yung gaya na nabanggit kanina ni Jenny, um, we have uh, some bills like the Freelance and the Eddie Garcia bill that sort of addresses some of the concerns to some extent, but not all. So I think we'll need um, a separate measure uh, altogether for this. Um, thank you. I'll move on to SSS, um, to Carlo. Um, what, ano, what instrument does PSA have in order to identify yung mga self-employed workers because you were able to mention that there are 237. Yes. So, um, Mr. Chair, oh, I... Let me, let me correct the question. Uh, what instrument does SSS have to identify its 237 registered visual artists? Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you for that question. It gives me an opportunity to... to try to respond to the earlier question uh, given to Dole. Uh, uh, as regards uh, your other question also, uh, Mr. Chair, if the visual artists could be segregated, uh, the answer is yes. Um, it is just that uh, the presenter from Dole, Ms. Grace, is using uh, PSIC, PSIC. Yeah. There is also the 2012 Philippine Standard Occupational Code that uh, you know has four digits uh, to try to um, you know uh, establish the universe for uh, all workers in the Philippines. So, so kami tayo po uh, self-employed po yung tinututukan ko, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have reached out to PSA for the count of self-employed workers in different occupational codes. That is a big request actually, Mr. Chair, because uh, uh, there are thousands of codes kasi po, four digits po, Mr. Chair. Eh. In yeah. fact, for the visual artists Uh, specifically, the code is 2651 for visual artists specifically. And in my enumeration, in my presentation earlier, magkakasunod na po, na po iyon, Mr. Chair, 2652, 2653, 2653, 2653. 
hanggang sa makarating po ako doon sa dulo ng mga creative uh, uh, workers in the creative industry. So the answer is meron. And in fact, SSS has aligned itself with such occupational code so that we could have a universe to start with, which is from PSA data. And we can compare it how far we are from um, achieving um, universal coverage uh, in among self-employed workers. So, hindi po sa amin yon sa PSA po, uh, and we just uh, adopted our classifications to suit PSA uh, coding para po magamit din namin maigi yung coding ng PSA. So yes, medyo konti po Mr. Chair, 237 lamang po visual artists ang pagka-register sa amin. But there are others po uh, and hopefully through the years or at least sana nga sa months lang ay mapaakyat natin yan yung registered po sa SSS through uh, uh, different programs of SSS. For the hundred artists, they, I, they indicated in the application form. Yes. So we have a form and then uh, there is a, a field for occupation and then doon nila nalalagay. Um, siguro, I can admit, Mr. Chair, it is uh, sometimes uh, a little bit subjective but uh, uh, medyo accurate naman po in my view po, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, and then could you qualify further the uh, the SOCs? Uh, for the last the last study was done in 2012, correct? Yes. Um, yeah. Um, it, is, it is called 2012 Philippine Standard Occupational Code. Yeah. So what is parang brazenly not there is yung mga gig economy code siguro na dapat ay masama na rin sa next run nila uh, uh, Mr. Chair uh, I, um, I, do, I don't know po Mr. Chair right now um, kasi tinitingnan din namin sila Mr. Chair dahil uh, considered self-employed din ang marami sa gig economy workers yung mga TNBS for example they fall under uh, under workers earning uh, income by driving a car or a motorcycle. Meron pa rin naman, Mr. Chair, ma masusutan in terms of occupational code, uh, to be fair po. Okay, sige. Um, siguro, Luis, let's reach out uh, to Yusek Fita also about the PISOX. Kasi yung PISIX, that's already accounted for in the creative industry bill. Uh, to be able to measure the economic contributions of the creative industry. So I think it nyo ng census of the labor force uh, that's not reflected in the current bill. So baka po di habo sa Senate, yung PISOC. Got it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, um, what percent, sir, of the 59 groups you mentioned you're in touch with have actually uh, signed up to the program. And what are your identified bottlenecks if not everybody is up for an SSS? Yes, so the 59 uh, groups that we consider to be part of uh, visual arts uh, and related industries, it is really a simple email, Mr. Chair. It's an email outreach program that we have uh, instituted so sa 59 po na yon, it only 9 resulted in uh, having actual meetings with them wherein we presented that we could partner up at the very least for information dissemination arrangements. Uh, but at most naman po, sana is uh, to facilitate registration and contributions collection arrangements. We are not familiar with how these associations are set up, but okay. we try anyway. Uh, at the very least, we hope to partner with them for information dissemination arrangements. That's that should be very easy, Mr. Chair, because we give lang naman kami ng links to videos or or infographics or art cards or brochures. Um, 
information dissemination arrangement should be quite easy to to manage for uh, in terms of partnership ang medyo challenging po yung uh, registration and uh, contributions collection po especially for big groups po ng association hindi naman ho very uh, structured ang kanilang uh, membership juice arrangement so parang hindi nila kayang mag-collect in behalf of their uh, um, constituents so uh, we still try kasi po yun po ay isang paraan para matiyak ang SSS coverage ng mga artists through their associations if the association has some kind of administrative setup that mm-hmm. uh, you know allows a person a little bit knowledge in computers basta may internet access po Mr. Chair um pwede na namin silang maabala ng kaunti to generate a collection list and pay to SSS every month. Medyo dyan po sila na, na off dyan sa administrative task na yan. Baka din uh, they're concerned about uh, accountability and burden. But uh, that's it, Mr. Chair. All right. Para para mention uh, the uh, affordability is an issue even if uh, the lowest tier, 400 pesos, uh, seems at face value uh, very ano, attainable, but uh, because of the precarious nature nga of the artist, they're not always able to contribute. So I just wanted to clarify one uh, a few things. First, the the required contributions it doesn't have to be regular, no. It's lifetime. Yes. So this month, wala akong kita, hindi muna ako mag-contribute. Correct. All right. Okay. And then. Um, Secondly, uh, the 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 floor for um, the floor for the contribution. Of course, I'm sure you guys have um, metrics that guide this, which also speak to the overall sustainability of the SSS fund. No? Um, yes. What would you say would be some kind of adjustment that can possibly be made? Uh, whether through legislation or programmatically through SSS, to be able to emulate what was said earlier by artist welfare that uh, the creative class needs its own kind of welfare um, structure or mechanism that is different from everybody else's because of the nature of the creative and the artist itself. Uh, that's a heavy question, Mr. Chair, but I'll answer it like this. Um, you will look for uh, another uh, social assistance or social security program if you believe that the SSS program is uh, uh, not able to provide uh, meaningful benefits. And um, my humble contention is that the program of SSS is already very generous compared po sa mga uh, ibang pension schemes. Uh, yung contribution requirement po na 120 contributions to be eligible for a retirement pension is one of the shortest, if not the shortest number of contributions requirement to be eligible for such a pension. Um, Ourselves in government, uh, 15 years po ang kailangan to be eligible to a retirement pension. Um, I guess yung question yung Mr. Chair is something that we need to toss to our actuarial and risk management group if yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, a separate program is can be formulated that is more responsive and more meaningful in terms of benefits to such workers uh, as uh, those in visual arts. But um, I humbly submit, Mr. Chair, that the program of SSS is sound and generous, especially with the enactment of the Republic Act 11199 uh, two years ago, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, uh, are there other uh, government-led uh, uh, social pension systems? Is there military and police? 
Yes, um, hindi po sila under ng SSS. So I think they have their own, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Philippine Veterans uh, Affairs Office, PIVAO, uh, uh, is one for the veterans. And uh, hindi lang ho ako masyadong familiar, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, teachers, SSS sila. Uh, no, GSIS. GSIS sila. Yung public school teachers, no? Correct, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. All right. So, yes. so um, siguro we'll, ano, we'll do further studies on this proposal if we're going to be filing a, a welfare bill um, for the creatives. Um, yung 59 um, that you emailed, um, would you be able to furnish us a copy of who those are? Of the, who um, those organizations are? Um, and, uh -huh. We're also limited eh, in terms of like who we know, and and then in terms of being able to invite them to participate in these fora. So, um, mm -hmm. so uh, perhaps, Mr. Chair, I'll just double check with in terms of data privacy. But uh, the the fifty nine that we sent letters to are professional associations in the industry. But I also uh, stress, Mr. Chair. It includes also venues and platforms on which uh, visual artists apply their uh, their their wares. So, nasama po namin ang mga broadcast network, ang mga radio network. So, baka baka hu hindi lang perfect yung understanding namin in terms of of what other related industries are but yun po yung 59 namin so you will see po some some names na mga talent management companies uh, po. yes pero medyo whole gamut po eh uh, mr chair check na lang, i mean subject to data privacy um because it yes. will be most helpful to the committee to know yes. groups yes para they can be uh, consulted with with policies um siguro this is a candid question uh to the stakeholders with sss present here with us and as we've heard from alpi kanina they're so grateful that sss has always been present in their physical gatherings pre-pandemic you know and as much as uh they've tried to engage with the office sss always sends representatives you no know? um pero to the stakeholders present um given the table and schedule of payments and contributions and benefits. Um, what are the no? What really are the biggest bottlenecks uh, in your opinion towards uh, joining uh, the SSS? This is a question for the stakeholders. Para we can try to find solutions. Uh, let's hear from Sir Ray Dai of Rights Action Philippines. Ah, yes, ah, Mr. Chair. Ah, siguro po yung yung proseso lang siguro. Kaya nga ang ang isap po sa mga ano namin recommendations siguro namin sa grupo namin. We will be inviting them sa mga symposium o yung mga discussions so that we could really understand on how the process goes. Siguro ganon po ang gagawin namin. Kaya po kanina ah, I try to get the contact number yung mga presenter natin from SSS. So, siguro mag-arrange mag, mag, uh, kami ng mga webinars okay. or discussions that we will invite you to, to give us uh, ano, uh, explanation or you know, discussion or information on how we can uh, process, uh, it, it, simplify the process Thank you so of having much. those things. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, what about uh, Alpi, uh, Jenny? Because you have historically engaged with SSS. So what do you think is the biggest bottleneck from your stakeholders being able to sign up to this program? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we are one of the 59. Alpi uh, has been one of the 59. But uh, we initially, we tried to collect the... The PhilHealth and the SSS from our members, but the sustainability talaga eh, uh, of the 400 pesos kasi is uh, a month, so every month, di ba? 
uh, is is a challenge number one. Lalo na you, sometimes you have work, sometimes you don't have work. So we asked SSS before na, for example, uh, we just pay how much whatever we have and then just compute after 10 years um, and then just compute how much yeah. how much we can get as ano. So sabi ng SSS sa amin, this was what, four years ago. Naku, we have to talk to the the board members. Pero hindi na namin na Pero Jenny, I'd like to challenge you on this, no? Kasi parang, uh, if, 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 if the policy wasn't lifetime contributions, then that could be an issue na this month wala akong sahod, hindi ako makakapag-pay. Pero actually, pwede naman mag-skip ng months. Kung kailan yes. nakakagaan, pwede sila mag-contribute. Kung hindi yes. nakakagaan, kung, kung hindi mag-aan, eto yung wag muna. So, um, Ano ba? So is it a matter is it a matter of affordability of the of the premiums being paid or is it uh, a matter of uh, lack of awareness on the part of the stakeholder? Yeah. Now is lack of awareness kasi yun yung alam nila eh dapat dapat continuous. Ngayon lang yung sabi na ah pwede naman pa lang skip skip. So um I think with this new information, we can tell our stakeholders na, oh, mga meron tayong update, hindi na, hindi na tuloy-tuloy. Parang hindi nakakatakot. So, uh, another thing is, di ba yung employer, em- employer share, employee share, yung kung 200 sa akin, or I have a three-month gig, if my employer, my contractor can shoulder the 200 pesos, Tapos ako 200 as an artist. Kaya lang magulo kasi kailangan mo pang i-log. So parang hingin mo na lang sa employer mo yung 200. Tapos sabi na employer, eh di ba kaltasin ko na lang sa, sa sahod mo yung 200. So medyo magulo. But I think uh, baby steps now we can tell our community na, okay, just kung today you have, you pay. Or kunwari nakabenta ako ng painting, that's Kasi 400 times 12, that's um, 4,800, right? Yeah. So, for example, all oh, at ng mga artists, yung, ibe, yung mabebenta natin this January, magbenta tayo ng painting worth 5,000. Tapos ibayad na natin agad sa SSS for the year. Yun na yun. So, yeah. pwede, ba rin, pwede ba rin yun? Kasi minsan, talagang may malaking pera yung artist. Minsan, wala talaga siyang pera. So, um, you can advance payment like that. Pwede ba yun, Sir Carlo? Pwede ba ano, mag-advance payment ng contributions? Yes. The answer is yes, you can. Um, we do not advise it to be very uh, long. Uh, siguro at most, mga one-year advance lang po. Uh, but the contributions become uh, recognized as the month passes, uh, Mr. Chair. So if you're gonna pay for the next 12 months, uh, hindi pa kasama yung future contributions mo, kahit bayaran mo ngayon, doon sa pag-compute ng iyong benefits. But right. yes, if it is easier for you administratively uh, to do it once uh, once every year or twice, pwede po. Yun lang po ang uh, qualification that it is not yet recognized as the as until the month arrives. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the, the biggest bottleneck right now, I suppose, is really the lack of awareness of these new systems. I only learned about it today, to be honest. Um, and so it doesn't seem to be restrictive in that sense. Um, and so unless there are other viewpoints that we're not uh, able to take consideration of. Uh, Sir Ray, did you want to add anything? I saw you turn on your camera. Well, uh, siguro, uh, ang maganda po talaga dyan is series of discussion with those uh, branches of the government agencies mm-hmm. para po talagang malinawan. Kasi po yung mga artists talaga, as in, hindi nila alam kung paano ipaprocess yan, nadi-discourage sila dahil ang daming pwedeng daanan. Kaya nga po, uh, ang nakita ko talagang uh, kahalagahan din ng paglalagay natin ng mga coordinator at yung mga organizer para ma-explain doon sa mga artists na meron kayong ganitong benefits na pwedeng makuha 
kung kung ma-unite kayo into group ito yung mga benefits kasi nakita nga namin nandiyan yung mga benefits okay ang dami doon sa previous uh, a hearing din nakita namin na maraming ano maraming branches of the government that are willing to ano to help us but the thing is hindi kami aware kung paano ipaprocess yan siguro with the help of uh, coordinators and the uh, cultural organizer they could ano able to 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 give us insights and help on how to process those thing including the yung pang mga paggawa ng proposals awesome thank you so much thank you pa. Um, and then, you know, this is just a, a quick question along last for SSS. Uh, so your your contributions, uh, your memberships, they only cover individuals, no? Um, Ops or associations? Uh, what do you mean, Mr. Chair? Uh, we cover all workers. Uh, so, of course, you're employed and then self-employed. Uh, when you say uh, associations, what are you... What did you mean, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, no, wala lang. Parang, uh, well, of course, this is uh, this was pre our discussion right now about how it's a matter of awareness rather than capacity. But uh, when I jotted uh, down this question, uh, parang as a way around capacity of the individual artist who maybe. Uh, might not be able to sign on to the program. Um, parang does the SSS deal with like a group in which yes. for the group, magaambagan yung mga members yung kaya nila, and then the benefits will cover uh, an individual within that group or the entire group. I don't know. Parang yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. Um... I think that was already a little bit what we are trying to drive at. Um, for, for example, AOP, as an example, if we are, if they could be, uh, you know, requested to handle um, uh, contributions collection from their members, uh, however which way they do it, and then we will ask LP at the end of every month to generate a list corresponding to those members who gave money for their SSS contributions and then uh, pay to SSS corresponding to that list, Mr. Chair. So we are doing that and that is the meat of our email when we send out to all these uh, groups of uh, professional associations who are um, who are who band together uh, for the benefit of their um, uh, members who are self-employed. Yes. Uh, talking about uh, having a middleman for administrative okay. proficiency. I'm talking about some kind of so like a paluwagan system. Parang ganon in which it's the association that engages with SSS and based on a, a spirit, a system of cooperativism or association, then maybe whoever, whichever member will be in need uh, for this particular time can access um, the, the benefits from SSS. Is there such a thing or such an arrangement? Mm -hmm. um Pasensya na, Mr. Chair, if I'm uh, saying the same thing and uh, you mean something else. Uh, like, parang palupagan. You know how like in palupagan, uh, okay, uh, uh, this month, uh, I'm going to give all the money. Diba? You know how you know, the, the yes, yes, palupagan is yes. among mm. bagan? Uh, uh, po. Um, hindi ho ganun eh. Hindi ho parang palupagan, Mr. Chair. So, um, if you want to access the benefits from SSS, uh, understandably, you should be paying contributions for according to our uh, contribution schedule. And then, uh, parang, uh, I'm, I'm, I apologize if I'm going back again to the middleman sort of arrangement where in the cooperative or the association uh, collects for in behalf of their members. <laughs> 
because their members are perhaps more familiar with them or more at ease with them. And then and then yung cooperative or yung association po na yun, Mr. Chair, ang mag uh, iipon at magtatali ng listahan naman naghulog sa kanila para lang mabigay sa SSS. We have such, uh, Mr. Chair, arrangements. Um, we have done that uh, government-wide because there are also independent uh, contractors in, in government, yung mga contract of service, job order workers. So yung mga uh, ganun po, may arrangement kami with uh, many government entities wherein they collect among their uh, job order workers yung panghulog nila sa SSS and then sila po ang nag-iipon nun at nagbabayad, nagre-remit po sa SSS every month. Uh, something like that, uh, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, Luis, I'd like us to just uh, take note of these two ideas. I don't want to let go of it just yet, but maybe we can't find answers in this hearing. Uh, it needs a little bit of research. One is the idea of like a paluwagan kind of system um, to be able to address uh, the capacity of individual members to be able to join certain programs like social pension systems. Um, and not paluwagan in a sense of having a middleman in the, of the, in the association for the administrative efficiency of the payment of contributions, but more of like, parang, you know, members coming to the rescue of whatever, of their fellow members to be able to avail of the benefits when needed. Okay, so that's one. And then the second thing that I'd like us to um, also uh, take note of, and as I'm trying to remember it, because it's not coming to my mind right now, um, I will let you know na lang, uh, Luis, <laughs> once yes, I remember. Yes, come. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, yeah. Unless you read my mind, <laughs> you want to say Maybe something? Sir Maybe, sir, a dialogue as, uh, as uh, commented by Sir Ray, uh, a dialogue between SSS as well as other uh, groups of the stakeholders here present. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh -oh. right. Shucks. Uh, I'll get to it na lang later when I remember it. Sayang. Um, yes, come okay. on. I'll move on to fail health. And siguro, I just want to understand um, uh, the universal health care, the, the membership, uh, programs that you have vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the HMOs, the private HMOs, which are present here today. So, um, so Jenny, uh, Jenny Bonto of uh, Alpi, um, you mentioned earlier that uh, you have an HMO uh, with Alpi uh, where you have 600 uh, members. No who signed up to that HMO, who pay monthly uh, or yearly ba? annual contributions? Pan annual. Annual. Year. One year. Annual yeah. contributions. So ano ba yung na-provide ng private HMO na hindi kaya i-provide ng universal health care at ng PhilHealth? So bakit kailangan magbayad pa ng extra? Kung libre na naman ang health care, supposedly. Uh, yung PhilHealth... It's free sa government hospitals. Pipila ka. And uh, yung difference is sa private hospital, um, kasi mahal eh. Bayad ka sa doctor. So, uh, pwede kang maka-access sa private hospitals if you have HMO. So, yun lang essentially yung difference. Kasi, we have members kasi di ba syempre it's just 75,000 ang limit. Sabi ng artist, uh, yung 10,000 pe peso ko, uh, naubos ko na yung 75,000 worth. So balik na ako sa government hospital. At least nakatikim siya ng private hospital. <laughs> uh, okay. So, it's just an additional option for the members. Um, yeah. But because of the HMO for artists, kasi kahit na private or public hospital ka ma-hospitalize, kailangan, pas kailangan bayad yung PhilHealth mo. Kasi the first part of the bill, dapat PhilHealth ang magbabayad. So, yung mga members namin, 
uh, nagbabayad pa rin ng PhilHealth. Kasi meron ring mga, uh, for example, cataract. You can get some a, a lot of extra help from PhilHealth if you're a member. So I, I can more or less assure that does those 600 people do, does na merong HMO with Coco Life is feel health may may feel health sila. And uh, yun okay. yung ginagawa namin pag uh, oh bayaran na ng feel health o sinong sasabay ako magbabayad for you. G- ganun lang. Um and uh based on your assessment of your members and this is also a question for Sir Ray and other private sector stakeholders who are here. Um, lahat ba ng members yung may field health? Uh, actually, uh, yun nga po ang nakakalungkot eh. <laughs> Mas marami po yung walang field health. Actually, nung, yung dun nga po dun sa pagpapaswab nung nagkaroon ng uh, pandemic, yung during the pandemic, uh, maraming gusto magpaswab. Okay. Kaya lang ang problema, hindi po sila tinatanggap kapag wala po silang field health. Hindi sila pwede magpaswab kasi ang unang requirement pag magpapaswab ka even sa barangay dapat may pill health ka. Hindi ba sabi kasi ng pill health kanina, uh, libre mm-hmm. naman daw ang pill health. Oh, sorry, let's let's ask for a comment from Pill Health. Uh, based mm-hmm. on what was shared so far. Uh, Jenny? Yes, oh, sir. Definitely. Oh. Oh. So, why is it Why is it that marami sa mga visual artists natin, uh, it seems wala pa silang feel health? Is, do you think it's a matter of uh, access or is it a lack of awareness on how to sign up? It's a combination of a lack of awareness and a lack of capacity to pay. Oo. Di ba libre naman ang feel health, sabi niyo? Uh, sir, yung coverage kasi natin per UHC Act, talaga namang immediate eligible yung mga tao. Immediately, pwede sila maka-avail. Pero okay. syempre po, to ensure na patuloy-tuloy sila makakatanggap ng benefits, kailangan nagbabayad sila ng premium. And okay. ang premium, pwedeng through the national government subsidy kung ikaw ay part ng indigent program or magbabayad ka, magsishare ka ng premium contribution mo. Either sharing kayo ng iyong employer or Uh, may sponsor na pwede magbayad for you or shared kayo ng sponsor. Pwede po yun. Or pwede rin naman po as uh, mayroon po kaming group enrollment. Pagka group enrollment po may incentive po yun. Pero mayroon po yung required na number of people para makakuha ka ng incentive. Uh, pwede naman po through the hospital kung kailan ka mag-a-avail ng benefit doon ka magiging uh, uh, enrolled ng uh, PhilHealth. So, yun po yung mga ways for them to be part of the program. Ngayon, kung yung concern for you, sir, kung meron po kayong list, may database po kayo ng inyong mga members, baka po kasi yung iba doon, hindi sila aware na part pala sila nung listahan ng DSWD ng poor through the National Household Targeting System. And pwede po natin i-verify, i-validate po natin, and we can inform them kung talagang members sila. Sayang po kasi kung members sila, hindi pa pala sila aware. So just give us okay. the list po and we can validate. Tapos inform po namin kayo, update po namin kayo. Okay, may, may I add lang po, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Kasi uh, may experience po kasi kami dyan nung mag apply ng PhilHealth, kailangan bago ka matanggap yung application mo, kailangan magbayad ka ng 500 pesos. Tapos may mga requirements na hinihingi. Hmm. May mga ganun po. Hindi ka naman po i-member i- niyan kung hindi mo muna babayaran yung initial fee. May ganun po. Yan po yung mga experience namin. At the same time, siguro po, uh, um, para din po yung sinabi ko sa SS, siguro invite din namin kayo one time sa grupo namin to discuss it. Kasi talagang ang kailangan po talaga natin dito for, for us to be aware na merong hmm. mga ganyan is information drive. Yes, na hindi po ganun kadaling makita kahit sa website nyo. <laughs> It's uh, sad to say po. Pero kung meron niya na information drive na okay, ang, ang pill health open po sa mga artists, ganito lang ang kailangan gawin, ito yung step by step. Kaso wala po kaming nakikitang ganyan eh. Siguro kami na po ang reach out sa inyo, invite namin kayo into some meeting probably so that you could help us understand 
kung ano-ano ba yung requirements at ano-ano po ba yung process na pwede namin pagdaanan. By that way, siguro uh, kung okay naman at hindi naman ganun ka, ka komplikado yung proseso, maaring marami sa mga artists ang, ang matulungan for that. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Sige, Mr. Chair. Uh, lalo na po ngayon na under na po tayo ng UHC, baka po kasi yung information na alam ni na Sir Ray ay yung pa pong pre-UHC po po. So ngayon po, we have ano na po, uh, additional benefits and additional information that you can uh, we can provide. Ayun. Okay Great. po. Thank you so much. Uh -oh. So I mean, that's why um, to SSS kanina yung 59, <laughs> baka you can share that also with PhilHealth para they can also reach out to those 59 <laughs> groups that you've been in touch with. But uh, ma'am, just for my education, no, because uh, I'm not super familiar with uh, uh, the PhilHealth system, uh, is it just like SSS? Na is it lifetime um, contributions um, to qualify for certain benefits? Or does there have to be a regularity na every month kailangan nagbabayad? Every month po. Pero kasi sir, at the age of 60... Hindi maputol. Um, maputol yung chain at any time sa PhilHealth. Um, ngayon po kasi immediate eligibility. Immediate eligibility, kahit hindi ka pa po nakakapagbayad, makaka-avail ka because of the UHC Act. Okay. Tapos kung sa kasakali po na meron po kayong missed period at this point, pero na-hospital po kayo, makaka-avail pa rin po kayo. Mangyayari po noon kung kayo po ay may capacity to pay bago po kayo maka-avail ng susunod ninyo na hospitalization, re-require po kayo na PhilHealth na magbayad po ng premium na namiss ninyo. Uh, actually, yun, yun nga po ang problema. Hindi ka i-admit o hindi ma-admit ka sa hospital probably but kailangan para ma ma maging eligible ka para do sa PhilHealth, kailangan i-update mo yung payment mo. Or otherwise, hindi ka po makakakuha ng ano ng benefits ng PhilHealth kung hindi updated yung inyong PhilHealth. So ganun po, pagpasok sa ospital, kailangan ay sikasuhin muna yung PhilHealth para ma-eligible, maging eligible ka for the benefits. So babayaran po, ibig sabihin, yung mga arrays, yung mga hindi mo na bayaran. Uh -oh. so, so, may, <laughs> yun po. so, paano ba yan? Hindi ba, it, it would need an act of Congress ba? Um, Ma'am Jenny, para ma-adjust natin yung, yung sistema na hindi kailangang regular, I mean, pwede namang staggered, or parang, is it because there is a UHC Act na wala naman sa SSS na uh, already you can avail of benefits of healthcare even without making a contribution? Basta, yes. ah, okay. Sa yes, UHC na po kasi siya. So yung concern po ni Sir, sa ngayon po, hindi naman po agad-agad na nire-require sila na magbayad. Pero yun nga po, bago sila maka-avail sa susunod na pagpapa-hospital nila, kailangan yung na, yung na miss nila na period na bayadan nila. Pero sa ngayon po, kung agad-agad ngayon, dati sila naka-miss, mag avail sila ngayon, makaka-avail po sila. Uh, pero ang sinasabi nyo, kailangan ano, uh, either yun, nakapagbayad ka ng premiums mo or na-subsidize sa na national government kung ikaw ay part ng DSWD Indigency Program. Tama? Uh, okay. Uh, Jenny, you're raising your hand. Uh, I just wanna support yung uh, dati kasi you need to, may magpapa-opera ka today. <laughs> Dapat updated yung PhilHealth mo six months before. Tapos naging three months na lang yon. Tapos yung may mga, so nag, I, I feel na si PhilHealth Patuloy silang nagde-develop ng kanilang programs. Inaayos talaga nila. Pero kailangan habulin yung information kasi medyo natatarantan na din kami, di ba? Kung... <laughs> so, um, but uh, in, in, mayroon kami kausap, officer, ang AOP, may officer in charge sa amin, uh, si Sir Dennis ng PhilHealth. Natatawagan ko siya eh for my members pagka may mga kaso. So, malaking tulong sa amin yun. So, I think yung ganong, ganong sistema na uh, PhilHealth has officers for these, these art groups, uh, parang point person, it really helps kasi we, we kind of needs extra explanation. Yeah. Thank you. So, focal, no? But I mean, that's also the proposal of Sir Ray earlier. 
there's a cultural coordinator uh, in, in each community who can be the, the, the tell all be all of anything an artist would need. Um, but it's also nice to know that my focal on field health for Alpi, like young si Sir Dennis. Uh, I hope that he'll be able to meet more. But um, so yeah, we'll we'll try to facilitate uh, so that field health will be in touch with more groups, and then you can do your awareness, information campaigns and strategies. So okay, na naman pala. improvements are being made um, throughout the whole um, process to be able to better the experience of artists. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, siguro, ano, uh, I'd also like to request uh, for uh, as a presentation along similar to what SSS showed. Um, if you can submit, ma'am Jenny, to the committee of like, uh, you know, the calendar, payment, schedule, benefits. Okay, ma'am. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah, submit it na lang to us. Thank you. Um, I'll move on finally to uh, Jenny. Um, Okay, so uh, the HMO, all right. So definitely, uh, it's sa mga private hospitals, uh, and it's another option um, for artists. Um, you mentioned somebody had said they lock us in rooms. So I would, I would imagine this is a concern for Dole, um, and uh, pag may mga cases of human rights abuses. Uh, you reported uh, Jenny to Sina Mark. That's a bureau of ano, ano ba yan? working conditions. May direct line ba tayo sa kanila? Uh, sir, uh, if I may pa. Uh, any, ano pa na? any violations of the labor standards po, uh, pwede pong i-report sa DOL regional offices or field offices na meron pong jurisdiction po sa ano sa sa place of employment po. So by all means ano naman po ma ma address po sila. We also have our doll hotline 1349 na pwede nilang tawagan para ma-report po yung uh, cases of abuses. And we will ano po, we will uh, we will assist naman po no yung mga complainant na ma attend po yung ano yung justice na yung para po sa kanila. So it's an awareness, it's an awareness issue. Would you say? Kasi the instrument exists na may sumbungan naman pala. Yes sir, apo. Unless you have another viewpoint, Jenny. Uh, we need a uh, proof of concept eh. <laughs> Kasi yung ako din pa artist mag-report. Takot eh. For retaliation, no? Yeah. Um, too much is on the line. And when you don't work, kasi when you, you spend the day to to do that, to fight for your right, you don't, you, you miss out one day of work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, also, kahit alam nila na meron silang kaso, Yung the idea na I have to log this, parang sige na lang, charge to experience na lang. I don't know, it's it's very sad, but um, ewan ko kung bakit ganun. In, in, walang, walang, kaya yung proof of concept eh, kasi we're just waiting for one person to be magkoreklamo, na ayos niya, natulungan siya, then other people will have more confidence too come step out. So parang ano no, you, maybe you can say na there's a power imbalance there na talagang disadvantage yung artist yeah. regards to, you know, reporting these cases for fear of retaliation or uh yeah. sila ng opportunity for work. Yeah. So, Hindi siya fear, totoo siya. <laughs> Mangyayari. Hindi ka nakukunin ulit. Uh may kaso tayo with talents. Uh, talents, meaning yung extra sa TV. Yeah. So, nung pandemic, tamang-taman, nagkaroon sila ng trabaho. Very, very lucky sila. They felt so lucky. Pero yung after the shooting, parang three or four days pa bago 
bago dumating yung pera. Tas, so after two days na hindi nila nakukuha yung money nila, natakot na sila. Nagsabi sila sa AOP. And we had to uh, try to ask kung ano nangyari. Mm. Tapos very, very, ano yon very critical, yung very touchy and sensitive yeah. kasi ayaw natin magalit yung producer. Baka mas lalo silang hindi kunin. And nabigay yung pera nung Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday. Pero nung second show nila, second shooting, hindi na sila kinuha. Okay. So that's a fact. Uh, so I mean, buta na lang in our freelance bill, uh, merong ano, uh, non-retaliation clause that is defined as a uh, violative act uh, which uh, yung kung mag uh, kung uh, mag retaliate because of cooperates sa investigation for example or nag report ng abuse uh mafa fine yung hiring party so at least that's addressed there in that bill so we just really have to lobby um for its enactment And then in terms of, uh, I saw in your slide na parang, oh, multiple drafts uh, before payment. I think that issue was already, is covered by a clear-cut contract that uh, we are institutionalizing also through the freelance bill and also violations of said contract meting uh, administrative penalties. Um, yung tattoos and uh, you have to cut your hair, I think that's addressed by the comprehensive anti-discrimination bill. Um, kailangan rin siya siguro may an act uh, para hindi na maranasan ng kahit sino man yung mga ganong klaseng um, uh, uh, abuses diba? uh, sa kanila. Um, the access... Uh, in terms of marketing space, digitization, and training, at least that's addressed by the creative bill. But the access to materials, I think that needs a tax measure that we need to file. Um, so we will re- do some research on this. Um, I do want to know, though, Comsec, from the NCCA, if such grants uh, exist and if it can be used for that purpose of accessing uh, materials uh, for the art or the craft of our artists. You know? So siguro, let's just find out from Sina Charles. Um, uh, tama ba, Jenny? You mentioned the 15,000 uh, applied for the social amelioration. Only 1,000 were approved. That's less than 10%, actually. It's, uh, it's very alarming and very sad because you worked so hard on that law. Um, so was it a matter of um, the the Dole um, website crashing upon applying or them not having enough papers to comply? Uh, what, why, why is it 1,000 lang? Uh, we, we emailed 15,000 people. Out of that, 5,000 lang yung nag-apply. Uh, because it was so nagmamadali, crashing. So sa 5,000 na nakalusot dun sa sa website, um, 1,000 yung na-approve and alam ko 1,000 yung na-deny because of uh, lack of kulang ng, ano, ng mga papers. Kasi actually they were just asking for two papers. An ID a valid ID and a proof of contract. And uh, what was the problem, Jenny? I mean, lahat naman may ID, eh, di ba? Hindi. Valid Ilan? ID? No. All right. Of, we're, we're talking about ano, uh, grassroots people mm-hmm. na may isa, uh, mayroon daw siyang ID, pero yung uh, nung kampanya nung isang congressman, yun yung ID niya. <laughs> Parang sabi ko, mayroon ka bang school ID? So, you know, this 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 awareness. But I I really appreciate Dole, the, you know, the, the extra effort during that time. Yun lang, uh, we were not as ready. Um, that's why nung in, inter- in interview or we met through your uh, office also yung 
BIR to have a BIR ID, you know, ID systems. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to <clears throat> push for that also because wala eh, nasayang yung chance. Pero grabe talaga yung, yung I'm, I'm sure yung 15,000, at least siguro 7,000 nag-apply. Kaya lang laging bumabagsak yung yung website. Mm -hmm. Tapos it, kahit na akala mo madali na dito ka pipindot, dito pipindot, ang dami naming tanong. We were, ang volunteers nung time na yun were 30 people uh, trying to answer all these questions and you know trying to beat the deadline. So uh, it was not as organized as yeah. could have been. Yeah. Ang unang ano po, uh, Mr. Valeros, ang unang deadline po sa amin nung kinontak kami, we were given ano, four hours or 12 hours to submit. So parang, oh my gosh, how can 15,000 pe 15, people submit in 12 hours? <laughs> so, hindi namin ma-imagine. But thank you po. At least 1,000 and a bit na nakakuha ng 5,000 pesos. Uh, tapos na yon <laughs> ng Christmas. Um, At nag-extend. Tough. Nag-extend rin sila ng deadline. Yes, that's right. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, Sir Ray, go ahead. Uh, ah yeah, uh, uh, to add to add to that uh, Mr. Chair uh, kasi nabanggit niya po yung ID yung identification kasi alam po naman natin na most of the artists freelance po yan wala po sila mga company to provide them uh, identification cards so yan din po ang nagiging problema sa sa part namin kasi pag may mga halimbawa uh, tulong na ibibigay ang dami nilang hinihingi eh. kasi may, kailangan may IDs ka talaga so dahil nga lack of those documents, nadi-discourage na lang kami. Kaya nga po sana, uh, iyahabol ko lang po yung pag-create po natin ng, ng office, ng, ng L, uh, local art council office. Sana po ma-incorporate ma po nila yan na mm -hmm. since magkakaroon naman ng database yung mga artist, so sila na po yung mag-provide ng mga artist sa mga, ano, uh, ng, ng mga identification sa mga artist na nire-recognize nila na itong artist na to, talagang artist ito, at ito yung mga credentials na naka-register sa amin to, naka-record dito, na i-consider din as legal documents. Kasi since government naman galing yung IDs na ipuprovide ng mga, ano, ng mga uh, local art council offices, so pwedeng gamitin ng mga artists as their credentials since wala nga po sila kasi mga IDs talaga. Eh. Kasi they're all, ano eh, most of them are uh, freelancer. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sir Ray. Uh, you know what? Thankfully, uh, in the last Congress, we passed the national ID system. So we just really have to wait for it for its complete uh, rollout. Um, and siguro malaking tulong yun in this sense. Um, although, um, the other side of the equation to what Jenny mentioned, it's uh, they were asking for ID and they were also asking for uh, proof of ano, contract. Proof of uh, undertaking. Proof of engagement, which is really a contract. Yes, yes. So it's also that contract that we need to institutionalize and capacitate our visual artists and creative workers. Uh, hopefully through the enactment of the freelance bill, um, we have uh, six months to get it done. So let's do it. Um, there was mention of legal help. Uh, needed for stakeholders, Jenny, in your presentation. Um, there's a public attorney's office naman, yung PAO, that, uh, that offers free legal services. So is that something that's accessible to the members? Mahirap ba uh, dumaing sa PAO? Or is it a matter of awareness? Hindi sila pumupunta doon. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I think it's an awareness issue. Kasi kaya nga the PAO was created. It's supposed to offer free legal services to um to uh, Filipinos who are not able to afford to get a lawyer. So, okay. I should work on that also. Um, all right. And then I took note of the other suggestions as well. 
Okay, sige. So, are there any other um, questions from anybody to the resource persons present? Or from the members to the resource persons? Because if there are none, we'll, we'll head to the final topic, uh, which is uh, visual arts and its correlation with tourism. So, we have here with us um, Teresita Landan, Acting Deputy Chief Operating Officer for Marketing and Promotions from the Tourism Promotions Board. Uh, and also, uh, Ms. Tunet uh, Velasco Aliones, the COO of the TPD. And then from the private sector, we're going to have a presentation by Baki, as represented by uh, our, our videos. So... Go ahead, DOT, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We'll wait for the presentation. Okay, uh, as mentioned by Mr. Chair, I am Baby Landan from the Tourism Promotions Board, the marketing arm of the Department of Tourism. Today, we'll be presenting the banner program of the Tourism Promotions Board in relation to the creative industry. Next slide, please. Uh, going beyond leisure and beach products, we have the new banner program highlighting our Muslim-friendly travel experiences for halal tourism. We also have the hobby, artistry of community weavers, and of course, Hilum as a wellness approach. For halal, we are promoting specific Philippine destinations as halal friendly and, and or halal compliant. For hobby, everything that makes a hobby or Philippine weave is significant among the indigenous groups. From the materials used, the designs, the embroidery, and its colors symbolizes the beliefs and rituals they practice. Through TPB's banner program for hobby, will be able to highlight the intricate nature of these traditional arts and crafts, passed on from one generation to another to become essential heritage products. Hilom, the Philippines has its own healing and wellness uh, practice through Hilot, an age-old indigenous Filipino art of healing that can be traced back from way back. To this day, mentally healed to relieve discomfort. Manila, Tagaytay, Batangas, and Boracay have their share of luxurious spa, resorts, and wellness centers that highlights the Filipino traditional massage. Next, please. To promote these banner programs, we have the following projects. First, we have the Philippine Weavers Tourism and Trade Expo. It brings the different Philippine weave products nearer to the public while assisting the identified communities in terms of uh, improving their products and services. We also provide a platform for the general public to discover or know better the different weave products of the Philippines. We also have the domestic invitational programs or the Philippine Tourism Influencer Program. It provides first-hand experience of the newly developed tourism circuits to tour operators and travel agents. The tourism stakeholders, including the media, the bloggers, will sample these tourism circuits to create buzz and awareness. Another project of TPB is the marketing assistance, Bali to the creative industry, marketing assistance to sustainable community-based tourism destinations. We provide assistance to certified SCBT as a global sustainable tourism council standard. Our assistance is focused on site marketing and enhancement, sustainability, and of course, capacity building. We are, we are also supporting other tourism related initiatives. It provides funding assistance to implement marketing plans and programs that support the rebuilding of tourism in the regions that promotes consumer confidence in the destination as a safe place to visit. Of course, all this promotion is aligned with the TPB banner programs, Halal, Hilum, and Habi. Next, please. 
Next slide, please. Of course, we cannot promote the Philippines alone and collab collaborating with the government and the tourism stakeholders is necessary for tourism recovery. We have uh, on your screen the tourism-related projects available for assistance from TPB. We have the high-impact tourism events, festivals that promote local culture and heritage. We have the marketing communication strategies and innovations, branding campaign, digital marketing, PR relations, and tourism collateral materials. We also have the sustainable initiatives and responsible travel promotions. It is an ICT enabled tourism promotions and marketing initiatives, community immersion and interaction, environmentally sustainable and socially responsible programs among others. Next slide, please. Of course, with all these programs, we are optimistic that we will be able to reopen our beautiful destinations to more tourists. While the volume of visitors will be likely be mababa po in the next few months, what is essential is to get started. In support of this uh, tourism recovery program, the Department of Tourism and the Tourism Promotions Board Philippines unveiled last Saturday po in Intramuros, a new video designed to welcome domestic tourists back to the country's tourism destination, highlighting the value and culture of the Filipinos. It is titled, It's More Fun With You. The main messaging of this domestic tourism welcome back campaign, it encourages Filipinos to travel and explore the country again and boost tourism during the pandemic. Please watch and enjoy the video. Sabik sa'yo It's more fun with you. It featured a surfing dog po named Tuna who is unable to contain his excitement as he welcomes a friend back to the beach after a long absence. Tuna po is one year and two months. Thank you and mabuhay. Happy birthday, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. I can entertain uh, questions po. Thank you, ma'am, baby. Uh, welcome. So, uh, we'll just do one more presentation before we do the open forum. Ah, okay, sige po. Um, it'll be uh, by Baki or the Baguio Arts and Crafts Collective, Inc., represented by R.R. Rubidios. R.R., take it away. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and everyone. Uh, may I share uh, a presentation? Yes, go ahead. Mm. Okay, um, Mr. Chair, I have uh, I have the following outline. Um, uh, just an introduction about uh, Baguio's visual arts, some statistics. Um, 
and then we have um, a presentation on the roles of visual artists in placemaking um, that is urban revitalization uh, through urban revitalization festivals and uh, creative hubs. Uh, I have some data on visual arts and the local creative economy and uh, what are the current efforts by Baki, uh, the NGO that I am heading, the Baguio Arts uh, Crafts uh, and Crafts Collective Incorporated and the uh, public-private sector uh, coalition, the Creative Baguio City Council and some uh, policy recommendations. Uh, based on a study by uh, Paulo Mercado in 2019, we have the following uh, statistics. 34% no? of creatives, uh, which at that time limited, uh, the creative industry was limited to the crafts and folk arts. No? Uh, in this study, folk art, 34% um, 30, no? of, of, the, of the sector are visual artists. No? And of these, 86% of them have not registered as a business entity. Uh, for reasons also mentioned earlier, like, like lack of awareness uh, about the process on uh, registering. And um, there's also aversion towards the bureaucracy, the red tape uh, uh, in, in, in uh, doing so. Uh, most of them are also freelance uh, artists. And uh, some of them, a significant number of them, in fact, uh, still don't believe that uh, they are that art should be commercialized. No, uh, the idea that art, the idea of art for art's sake, or just doing it for it, for its in, in, intrinsic value, rather than uh, for business. Uh, Thirty-six of the one hundred respondents are visual artists, of which twenty-five consider themselves full-time. Eleven are part-time, two freelance, and one subcontractor. Um, what are the top concerns or issues uh, identified by uh, the artists and um, creatives in 2019? Uh, these include lack of government support, finding uh, people interested in continuing, in continuing their arts or crafts, lack of customers' interest in, in their craft, and access to finance, uh, business support and cash flow management. Of, uh, this was uh, in 2019, so I'm sure the situation would have changed a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, uh, at, the, at the present because some of these concerns are already being addressed by the local government and the CBCC and the BACI. Um, so, what are the roles or roles of visual artists uh, and in urban revitalization? And let me just show you some pictures or images uh, to illustrate. Uh, they are active in, um, in revitalizing uh, spaces now within the city, like this Malcolm Square uh, People's Park, which was designed by an, arch by an architect artist. Um, architect Aris Go in collaboration with visual artists. Uh, we also have the uh, Estobosa Houses uh, project of the DOT car uh, under the um, leadership of then uh, DOT car regional director Venus uh, Tan, uh, where well, she, she turned this um, uh, area, no, uh, hill into a favela, favela type. Um, um, residence or space, right? Um, you also have um, murals or mural making along uh, uh, major roads uh, like the Nigelan Road uh, mural that you find here. Um, the murals of Benazir Martinez uh, in the Central Business District and it's continuing. They have more uh, they have this project called the Skinita project where, where they want to turn um, um, dark and uh, you know, not so clean spaces or Skinitas into uh, art spaces like this. Um, we have cultural performances also like uh, this one here in Ililikha led by our national artist, uh, Kidlat Tahimi. Uh, visual artists are also uh, very uh, important. They, 
they play an important role in festivals and fairs, no? like uh, the Panag Benga Flower Festival. Uh, we cannot come up with something visually festive like this without the visual artists. Uh, uh, the recent uh, Mangantaku or um, Let Us Eat a gastrono a Gastronomy Festival or Food Festival, uh, which is a new addition in our festivals here in Baguio City. Um, the Montañosa Film Festival, uh, which is a new festival um, only launched last year. Uh, the Tamawan Festivals and the Gong Festival. So um, we cannot have successful cultural festivals like this without the visual artists. And uh, also the Mandeco, uh, artisans fairs, you know, like the Impakabsat of DTI and the uh, Mandeco Quito or Let Us Sell, or the artisans market uh, like this one, uh, which uh, was organized only last year in the middle of the pandemic in June. So uh, we are running uh, the fourth edition this November um, during the Ibag Iyo Festival 2021. Uh, visual artists uh, are also uh, active in, in cultural and creative hubs. Uh, we have, in fact, we have creative hubs because of the, of the visual artists, uh, largely. Uh, we have the Museo Cordillera at the UP Baguio. The Baguio Convention Center has been um, uh, a venue for uh, visual arts exhibits like the Interlink uh, last year. Um, Sunshine Par Parks are now being turned, uh, converted, or um, becoming more interested because of uh, cultural and artistic activities like this one, the Sunshine Park, Art in Sunshine Park. Of course, we all know Benka Museum, we're familiar with it. We have the Tamawan Village, the Ililika uh, Artist Watering Hole. We have uh, a new museum for Igorot, cult Igorot cultures and arts uh, based in the university, the St. Louis University. And uh, we also have a fab lab uh, uh, located at St. Louis University, which is a collaboration uh, between academics, uh, technology um, experts, and artists. Um, so uh, how do we account for the contribution of visual artists and the local in the local creative economy. Uh, we have not, uh, this is not a complete picture, but we have some indicators such as uh, contributed significantly in the employment of 823 individuals as of 2019, uh, contributed in generating 10 million gross income in 2020 uh, during the combined uh, figures of uh, fairs organized by Manda Coquito, by the DTI's Impacabsat and the local government, uh, 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 the city government's market encounters during Sundays. Uh, for last year, at the, during the pandemic, uh, we earned a, a gross income of 10 million pesos. Uh, the Interlink uh, Visual Arts Festival no, that uh, I mentioned earlier, held at the Baguio Convention Center, uh, sold a total of 868,500 gross no? uh, for a period of three months, no? uh, last uh, 2020 Ibag Iyo Festival. An art gallery museum, I would have mentioned the name, <laughs> was earning 1 million uh, pesos monthly from entrance fees alone during the pre-pandemic period. So, uh, and of course, this is also uh, all largely due to uh, uh, the tourism, the robust tourism uh, industry in Baguio City. So it is linked to, to tourism. So this is just to show you that um, uh, visual artists do uh, contribute uh, to our local uh, creative economy. And this is not yet measuring everything. Uh, we we uh, have not taken into consideration many of the activities of individuals and groups who are still in the so-called informal uh, economy or not registered. Uh, what, are our, uh, what are the current efforts of BACI and CBCC? Uh, we are helping our uh, visual artists to register to BIR, to DTI and LGU. You know? This is, is uh, came up, actually came out as a matter of um, need you know, because when we were holding the uh, festivals and fairs, uh, 
uh, funded by LGU uh, requirement talaga yung uh, TIN yung TIN uh, yung TIN no and uh, business permit so uh, we they really were many of them were uh, literally forced no to register and to um, to to have some no a legal personality either through sec registration field jeps registration or LGU business permits no um, and uh, now an increasing number of artists are registered. In fact, here in the Asin Road alone, we were able to uh, register 25 wood carvers no, uh, to BIR. Last year lang yun. No? Um, we are uh, forging market linkages uh, by uh, organizing fairs or linking them to fairs here uh, and the national level, uh, galleries and uh, selling spaces. In fact, even SM in Baguio now has offered uh, their spaces for uh, galleries, no? uh, for our exhibitions, for our Baguio artists. We are also um, represent, uh, um, linking them through a representation or allowing them to speak, to have a voice in policy making uh, processes through the uh, CBCC uh, council, the, this big council that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so these are our policy recommendations to improve the welfare of visual arts uh, artists. Na pag-usapan nato kanina, marami. Like social security, yes, that's really needed, and tax incentives. Uh, establish an endowment fund or trust fund for professional development, for example, uh, to support, for example, artists in residence and exchange programs. Uh, that's why we envy the Gupan; they have this uh, program already, and we still don't have it. Uh, this artists in residence program that is institutionalized and supported by um, by the government uh, build more permanent public spaces for galleries that is a this is something that came out during the survey of uh, paulo mercado and the group in 2019 and that's why we are now um, creating more galleries for our artists and more opportunities for participation in national and international exhibitions. So uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, RR. So uh, the floor is now open for questions from the members, if there are any. All right, if there are none, I'd like to uh, get to uh, some of my questions. I'll start with the Tourism Promotions Board. Um, the first is actually not a question, but more of a uh, a reiteration, I think, of the need to synergize um, tourism with the creative industries and for this particular hearing with the visual arts sector. So it's mm -hmm. nice to hear from RR uh, in behalf of Baki that, you know, visual arts really brings sig something significant to the table. Uh, in fact, one million revenues alone from entrance fees from one museum. Uh, in, in gallery in Baguio City. No? So, so go to the question, ma'am, and this is actually my only question. Um, is there an effort uh, in the TPB uh, to uh, support mga visual arts um, endeavors? Or is it more of like on a needs basis if the visual arts sector reaches out to TPB um, for some kind of grant or assistance if it's in line with your advocacy? Of course, the assistance to be requested from TPV should be aligned with the uh, marketing trust. For info, Mr. Chair, we, we have been assisting I the U Festival of Baguio That's uh, right. for the past four years. Yeah, yes. the Tourism Bro right. Promotions Board is yeah. uh, really every year religiously supporting that uh, generously, festival. Generously. Generously. It's a big <laughs> amount, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so if ever the visual community has projects Let's say uh, any projects we can support in terms of promotions and marketing, any marketing expense. Yun po, that's the, the mandate of the TPB. Um, what do you mean by marketing expense, ma'am? Let's say you have a, a conference or an event. We can, let's say you, you're going to produce a material. We can uh, subsidize the, the payment. Uh, okay. But it should be uh, requested by the... The local government units or an association. We don't give support to uh, private companies. It's only LGUs, government, DOT attached agencies, association. 
because they need to submit legal requirements. Okay. Um, has there been an effort, I mean, to your knowledge, of any sort of a, a creative space or art, visual arts group or association to reach out to your agency? I mean, uh, the League of Cities earlier mentioned that, you know, there are initiatives, for example, in the gig um, or in Iloilo mm -hmm. or in uh, the city of Manila for the Maestranza Hub. And what was not mentioned, but I have personally visited is, for example, the Orange Project in Bacolod City. Um, has there been any effort mm -hmm. from among these groups to reach out to your agency, ma'am? Or kind of... So or far now, but then... We, we met with LCP through Ms. Vicky, I think three times, and we mentioned to them this assistance that TPV can provide to the uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. They can reach out to TPV for any assistance. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a, it's, it's an awareness issue, no? Yeah, uh, yes. Maybe we can invite the artist groups who are here, and there are two. Uh, there was mention of 59 earlier by the SSS and maybe others who are not hi am I still here or did I get cut? Yes, you're still there, Mr. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, parang, okay, okay. Um siguro, um maybe there should be an effort uh maybe through the committee we can create that kind of linkage uh, with the TPB um, and also through the advocacy groups that, you know, such support is available, not just through the NCCA for the uh, endowment fund grants uh, for projects, but also through the TPB for any marketing and promotional support that they can extend to your activities and advocacies. Siguro, uh, it's really important mm -hmm. to synergize the creative industries with tourism because you know, creative industries is almost like the soul of tourism, and tourism is one of the key uh, performance indicators uh, economically of the creative industries. So as more tourists are able to go to a specific community uh, because of the creative projects and endeavors that are present, parang, it becomes sort of uh, more... Uh, in the language that our uh, economic managers will understand to justify the, the, the expenses on the sector. Yes, so, yes. And to add on that, Mr. Chair, I forgot to mention, we also assisted the Montañosa Film Festival of Baguio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Care of Mr. Ferdi Balanag. Yes. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. right. yeah, we supported that. Mr. Yeah. Chair, I think advice, uh, Mr. Chair, sorry. May I, my advice to uh, our... Uh, counterparts um, in the other cities and uh, mm -hmm. in the country is to work closely with the DOT regional uh, offices Office. because that's how uh, we did it. Actually, mm -hmm. the projects were not, as mentioned by mom, were not uh, project proposals coming from the artists themselves, but uh, uh, proposals developed together with the regional okay. office because at the end of the day, it's really the DOT regional offices that that manages the funds, not the not the organization of artists. Yes, that is correct. And also, the they can also partner with the local government units. Okay. Aside from the DOT regional offices. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. So, um, so Jenny or or Ray, do you have any clarifications uh, with TBB? Well, uh, siguro po future projects na makakatulong sa mga artists, we will be tapping their ano, their offices po. Yes, if you have festivals that promote local cultures, heritage, if you have conference or events, yes, yeah. Tama po, tulong-tulong po tayo to yeah, promote our po lang para local ibang culture. Ng, yeah, yes. <laughs> Yung ating tourism din. Opo. <laughs> Kasi po nakita ko po ang ganda po ng presentation ng Baguio. Nakakainggit mm. kung tutuusin na sana lahat ng mga, ng mga municipalities through the help of uh, local arts council, ganyan. So and hindi lang po ano, local, pati mga international ma-attract po sa atin. Magiging uh, art capital tayo. Yeah, ang, ang maganda po dito, Mr. Chair, if I may add, yung isa pang proyekto ni Congressman Toff ay meron ng Philippine Creative Cities Network. Uh, so doon na yung magiging venue natin ng tulungan, no? uh, ng continuous uh, 
tuloy na to tulungan himbawa we can also have we can have trainings on proposal making no project kasi sinabanggit kanina hirap yung mga artists paano mag magsulat at magpackage ng project proposal we can do that po we we are willing to do that uh, to provide uh, to give a training on proposal making yeah no Excellent. thank you so much po thank you so much CCN po through CCN <laughs> Uh, um, baka ano, uh, Ray and Jenny, uh, kung meron kayong mga members uh, who are close or have some kind of direct line to their uh, mayors, uh, especially pag city siya, uh, baka mm-hmm. they encourage the mayors to sign on to the Philippine Creative Cities Network. Oo, oh, yes po. Date 27 pa lang yung members. Eh, there are 146 cities. So, we're trying our best, pero baka, alam mo na, kung kamag-anak niya yung mayor, uy, ano naman, sign on. Or kung, di ba, kung patron niya pala si mayor. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, can we get a copy? So, paano po? Yung, halimba, yung, yung, yung pinopropose niyo po, so, pag lumap, para po pag lumapit kami sa mayor, we could provide them information on, on this, ano, on this uh, group. Ah, yes. Oo. Uh, siguro, we'll upload... Uh, Luis, yung manifesto. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the Creative Space Manifesto. Uh, they just need to sign it. It's at really no cost to the LGU and they get to participate in uh, all the webinars that we are uh, conducting and also connect them with networks and uh, resources that they can access for their creative strategies. So, Mr. Chair? Yes, Jenny, go ahead. I, I want to manifest something like our weavers in Abra or in the South, like my backdrop is an Abra weave. Um, because of COVID, hindi sila na talaga nakaka-access ng mga changge-changge nila and trying to help, we've been trying to help them sell online. Mm. But you know, there's also access in the web. Kahit yung simple lang na if i-photo mo sa umaga, itapat mo sa araw, lagyan mo ng tao para yung like that na uh, I think baka meron tayong proyekto na can help our our weavers, local weavers in the provinces na nakatira sa the pangalawang bundok. Uh, kasi maganda, bibilhin abroad ang kanilang mga wares. Kaya lang, um, mayroon talaga silang challenges. Ma- madami akong observations for the past five years of you know, these gaps para yung mga weavers natin can have uh, sustained health. Kasi right now, changi-changi talaga. And nung March, they are, I'm just talking of one family, they are ready, they were ready with 200,000 peso worth of wares to sell sa summer. Uh, kaya lang syempre nag, nag-COVID. And as a matter of fact, parang sa Abra, two weeks ago lang nag, nag-vaccinate yung mga tao uh, pa lang. So, um, iba pa yung kwento sa South. Uh, so, ganun din. ID, <laughs> para makakuha ng social amelioration. Last time, Chairman Toff, um, uh, we just had to do something para mapirmahan nila yung mga kailangan pirmahan. Someone had to go there and travel to Bundok para mag-thumbprint yung mga, mga weavers natin na matatanda na. So I think napaka-exciting yung hobby, yung hobby, yung hilom na sana uh, ma-connect ma- ma- natin kasi I-, I feel that it's really, really a big gap you buy the 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 item in the, with the subanin for example for 4000 pesos it's sold for 10000 14000 pesos sa glorieta parang minsan dumadanok sa glorietas nakikita ko yung damit parang hindi ko man, hindi ko alam paano mag-react na alam ko 4000 lang to eh bakit naging 14000 so uh, I don't know how to 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 analyze this situation. I just know the the weavers and uh, they they have issues as as much as you know they we want to help them. <clears throat> Meron din sila mga kanika nilang mga kwento-kwento. And as a matter of fact, yung mga anak nila 
hindi na nagwi-weave. <laughs> uh, yung mga anak nila ay kumuha ng criminology. <laughs> mga ganun. Ang apo nila, uh, papasalubungan nila ng uh, Disney princess. <laughs> But, you know, uh, thank you so much po for the hobby campaign. I, I really support that. I support it. Thank you po. If I may comment, Mr. Chair. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I got caught for like maybe two minutes. Um, ah, but okay. Go ahead, Ma'am Baby, and then RR. Hi, Ma'am Jenny. Uh, to response to your um, comment, I'd like to inform everyone that we have this marketing assistance to SCBT sites, the one I mentioned earlier. Uh, we are conducting a mobile PPB workshop. It's a remote learning wherein the community members can attend the workshop with subject matter expert teaching them from their chosen location. Suggested topics to be covered are advertising, improving the packaging, design and crafting, digital marketing, social media management, kasama rin po yung content creation. Meron din po kami e-commerce management learning, the online shopping platforms and techniques. Meron din pong elevator pitching basics, how MSMEs can pre present their products to potential investors, clients, and tourism fairs. So meron po kaming ganyang proyekto, Ma'am Jenny, para po sa ating mga uh, weavers. At incidentally po, yung amin po mga mas binili po namin sa mga indigenous communities ko. Yung amin po sa amin field care kits. Sa kanila po yung nagaling. And then we also have the Philippine Weavers Expo next year, I think in March or April, where uh, I, we're promoting and highlighting the Philippine Weavers all over po. Yan, to support them. Yeah, ako naman, uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, also dagdag lang. Jenny, may I have the your contact number, your your details for, uh, yung contact nung, yung Abra na sinasabi mo? Kasi marami talagang opportunities katulad sa sabi kanina ni ano ni Ma'am here in the Cordillera region and Baguio City. Uh, in fact in this uh Ibagiu 2021 edition the DOT car also funded by TPB by the way is bringing uh, um, the weavers from all over the Cordillera region from the most remote uh, villages in the Cordillera uh, to Baguio to demonstrate their craft and sell Uh, in November. So please uh, give me your contact uh, uh, sa Abra so we can link them to the OT car. Also, DTI you know, has a very active campaign to link uh, our um, weavers from the remote villages in the Cordillera uh, to markets. You know, like uh, They have an, an impakabsa trade fair in Alabang uh, coinciding uh, with Ibagiu in November to December. So marami na pong ganyang opportunities. I I-connect lang natin, i-link up lang natin sila sa mga tamang institusyon. Yes po. Jenny, Thank oh. you po. Thank yeah, you, you may... po. <laughs> ang ang challenge, okay. ang cha isa pong challenge, Mr. Chair, no? uh, like when we see Bali, sa Bali po, ang suot nila sa grade school ay yung batik nila. <laughs> How wonderful if you know one of these days, all the public school people will be wearing our indigenous uh, clothes in, mahal, in internal mahal kasi, internal my market Jenny. <laughs> mahal <laughs> mahal she <siya>. mahal ba <laughs> pwede naman ano uh, uh, laban laban wa isa lang ilas <laughs> lalaban para sa mga ka ma'am Jenny binili namin sa ano 10,000 masks Yes po, so, kalang, you know, in, so, I, the, the the development of sustainability. Yung, yes, sorry so. po, Mr. Chair. Yung, yung idea ng ownership. Kasi uh, right now, if you buy, it's so mahal. So it's it's very, it's a fad. It's, oh, I have one. I have one barong. I don't really, yung like that. I just wear it sa International uh, Human Rights Day or like that. United Nations Day like that. But nung pumunta po kami sa sa Bali, amazing kasi yung taxi driver nakabatik. Tapos kami, hindi kami makabili ng batik ang mahal. <laughs> Pero you know, um, when we went to Taiwan and I was wearing that uh, Abra weave, yung taga-China na local China, parang pareho kami ng suot, parang may connection. It was just so wonderful. So I I yung 
yung hawak kong tapis, nirigalo ko dun sa, sa you know, alam mo yon mga exchange-exchange. So, nirigalo ko sa, sa kanya. Yun nga lang, yung rinirigalo sa akin pabalik, parang maliit lang na tuwalya. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, it fosters uh, cultural awareness and ano, it's something like that. So, I, I talked to one of the DFA officers before and there was really a campaign na o lahat ng taga DFA abra ang uniform taga lahat ng DA ano naman pinya yung ganon yung exciting sun when someone when a, a fashion person hello am I back am I back yes 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 stop sorry my internet <laughs> my internet am I am I here yes, yes you are here chair <laughs> you are back related so happy birthday <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. Here. Yun po. So, thank you, thank uh, closing you. lang po uh, the the idea that uh, the weavers these are small, these are lit, little steps and become big steps and you know, uh, we just have to be at it because uh, on the on the uh, Department of Agriculture naman, you know, they're trying to make a grow grow Uh, cotton, our own cotton, kasi di ba ang kwento natin, ah, made, made in Philippines, made in Philippines, pero actually yung, yung cotton binili nila sa Divisoria, <laughs> China. <laughs> yung mga sinulid. Paano ba yun? Parang so, um, it's, it's really an ecosystem. Thank you, Miss mm-hmm. Baby, Miss Ray, Miss Ray. You're welcome, I'm Jenny. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you. Um, just a few questions for Baki uh, and their presenta- uh, presentation. Um, I- I'm curious as to how um, DOT Car was able to get the buy-in of the homeowners for the favela project. Was there an incentive in place for them to agree for their homes to be painted a certain color? Oh, that's a good question. Um. I don't th- uh, para ano I think it went it went through a lot of community consultations uh, okay. no material the only incentive uh, congressman talk was uh, they get to uh, no, they, the, the paints were free it it was do- donated by Davis I think uh, the OT car uh, had a partnership with Davis or one of I think boys and one of the two big uh, paint uh, companies and um, constant dialogues with the barangay. So they had to get the, the, the support of the barangay officials and uh, the community. So uh, first the, the barangay officials and then the officials helped them convince the rest of the community. Not 100% uh, compliance or participation. There were uh, two or three houses or families who did not participate, but uh, well, that's still uh, a good number, a uh, good percentage of the community uh, congressman. But I'm an ordinance or anything. I mean, there's no legislative fiat for that. Well, it's really. Well, it's really through persuasion and you know, consensus building uh, within the community. That's right. So. All right, cool. Um, and then, uh, I mean, to your knowledge, since like you know, right now we're pursu- we're pursuing two arts and public spaces program, uh, here in our district. Uh, but since I saw in your presentation, there's so many super nice murals. Uh, in Baguio, um, parang based on the feedback that you've gotten from your constituents so far, I mean, what benefits do these murals bring to a community? Okay, okay, <laughs> that's a good question. I think it's it's more intangible. Um, you cannot really uh, measure it, but it's it gives them a sense of pride of place, a sense of happiness. You know uh, that uh, this. This uh, place, which which used to be, you know, uh, dirty and you know, unlivable, suddenly becomes livable and uh, nice and beautiful. You no, know? so uh, there's that uh, collective pride, I guess. No, uh, nothing, naman material that they get from it. You no, know? uh, it's just yeah, a sense of you know, pride of place. I think it's it's mm-hmm. really happening. You no. Know? And is it connected to any particular tourism program? in Baguio? Like, for example, is there like a tour of these murals? Or, uh, I don't know, parang do these uh, murals become sites for communities to gather and then 
are our festivals or workshops held in these Alam sites? Mo, yeah. That's a good question, Kong Tok. You know, it was really more organic. It was not programmatic. It was not planned. It was just, you know, uh, different. Actually, these are different uh, uh, organizations of artists uh, volunteering and uh, contributing. Um, so, for example, the ones the the one that you see in Nagilan Road, ibang grupo yan, no? ibang organization yan. They uh, sought funding from NCCA, yung IPs program ng NCCA. Uh, yung kay uh, yung, the one in uh, PNR, uh, the one in the yung sa, sa victory uh, it's also a different initiative so it's really more of an organic thing but they were i think inspired by our declaration our our designation as a unesco creative city all the more no because on their own they were owning it uh, owning the title and doing something to contribute to the to the designation if even if it were not really uh parang part of a systematic plan uh, to okay. to to you know to paint this uh, to muralize this space or that space. Ganon, uh, Others okay. are more planned. Like now, it's more organized. Now, uh, the OT is funding um, these initiatives already, and the LGU, you no, know, is also funding them already. Uh, the OT can also fund uh, mga murals and yes, arts okay. and public spaces. Yes. Uh, All right, um, and then. Uh, I'm also curious about the SM collaboration that you mentioned uh, that they allow uh, for visual artists to be able to showcase their their output uh, in the malls. Um, is that uh, a consequence of any particular incentive or ordinance that's uh, present in Baguio? Or is it more of like a collaboration, pakiusap, and they were more than willing to oblige? Right. I, I, this the SN naman, it's really, it's, it's between uh, another organization of artists, the Pasakalye, group of artists, mm-hmm. and the SM management. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it, it uh, also, it was also SM's initiative to reach out to the artists. You know, we have this issue with SM, right? So, so my issue ng, uh, how do you call this? Uh, public relations. So I think it, they also saw the need that uh, to, to do this and to work with the artists and collaborate. Mm-hmm. So there's that uh, parang yung corporate social responsibility nila. Uh, we work, uh, the, this group of artists work around that concept of corporate social responsibility. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing. It's, yeah, it's a bilateral arrangement between an artist group and SM management. I mean, CBCC even had nothing to do with it or the LGU okay. had nothing to do with it. Ganon. So this is, again, more, more like initiatives talaga na artists. All right. Um, but yeah, we, t- we took note of your suggestion na kailangan nga ng incentive system para more uh, mega establishments right. uh, would be able to you know, lend space and work yeah. with the creative community. I, let me also mention, uh, these are not all 100% voluntary. Um, for, uh, some are funded. No, um, In fact, most of the big murals that you see uh, were funded. NCCA funded it. Uh, yung yung uh, NLEX, uh, Northern Luzon Expressway uh, private group, funded the initial mural works of, uh, no, of Venasir Martinez. So oh, wow. public and private funding, uh, Congressman Toff. We have All to right. talk into that. Uh, Thank you. And I also took note of the suggestion for an endowment or trust fund uh, for this particular sector. And this yeah. is also what we're advocating in the Film and Live Events Recovery Act that uh, the collections from amusement taxes right. uh, will be marked for creative uh, endeavors within the same community from which it was collected. So, I mean, hopefully that's also yeah, impacted. I think that would be good though. Yeah. Um, all right. I mean, well, that's pretty much it for my questions and suggestions uh, uh, on the third topic, unless there are other queries from the members who are present. Are there queries from the stakeholders and resource persons who are present to any of the presenters? Okay, so if there are none, uh, we just have a few reminders that we'd like to flash once again on this on the screen. Luis. Okay. 
So again, we encourage everybody to please join the design counts uh, mapping of the design center of the Philippines so that we can quantify the uh, contributions, economic and social, of uh, uh, design um, to our uh, country and nation building. And then we also have the Create Philippines Viber group. You can scan the QR code to join uh, the community and uh, be uh, uh, kept up abreast um, on all the goings on in the creative industries. Um, there's also the Create Philippines website that you can visit, createphilippines.com. All right, next slide. Um, the Arts and Culture and Creative Industries Block, which is the handmaiden of this committee, the Special Committee on Creative Industry and Performing Arts, also now has a, uh, an Instagram page. So we encourage everyone to, to follow suit. Uh, and so you can be updated about all the policy work that the block is doing. Um, and it also has a Facebook page, uh, Arts and Culture and Creative Industries Block dash achieved. Um, and uh, we encourage everyone to please post all of your creative endeavors and use the hashtag the future is creative so that we can populate that hashtag with a lot of uh, organic um, uh, content uh, to showcase the best of Filipino uh, creative output. Next slide. Okay, no, but Mr. Chair. <clears throat> okay, that's it. And I that's, think that's that... Okay pretty much wraps up our three-part hearing on the visual arts sector. So in behalf of the committee and all the members, we wish to thank everybody who has participated. Today was not bad, four hours. Last time it was seven hours. And the first one was like six hours, I think. Um, so we have a lot of uh, ideas on the table. Some can be pursued uh, through collaboration, but others might need legislation. So um, that's the one that we are going to um, uh, start working on and hopefully be able to file these measures um, in the coming weeks. Uh, but definitely, we need a whole-of-nation approach in developing the creative sector, and we value all of the government resource persons who have been with us here um, and being open to suggestions and having more uh, webinars and forums outside of these hearings um, to be able to uh, collaborate and we also appreciate the private sector for being open and willing to suggestions uh, from the committee and its members as well as uh, being leaders in your own communities uh, and definitely you are the uh, handmaiden um, the caretakers the gatekeepers of the creative sector in which we cannot achieve any of these reforms without your support so government relies as much uh, in you as um, it does uh, with uh, any other sector so um, yeah that's pretty much it thank you again so much everyone and uh, can I hear a motion from a member to adjourn Comsec. You can adjourn by yourself. Okay. So, all right. Uh, on that note, thank you once again. And this meeting is here by adjourn. Thank you so much, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the birthday greetings. Thank you. Happy thank birthday. You. birthday. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so Happy much. Birthday, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Luis. There you go. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.